Hello and welcome back to the Amagi. Today we're trying something new, speedrunning Naruto. That means hitting every major plot point as quickly and efficiently as possible. I don't want to spend too much time on this intro because we're supposed to be going fast. Let's get right to it. 3, 2, 1, go. Prologue, Land of Waves. 12 years ago, there was once an evil monster known as the Nine-Tailed Demon Fox. One night, it attacked the village of Konoha and killed many innocent people that night. None of the ninja of Konoha could stop it, so the village leader, the fourth Hokage, cast a jutsu on the Nine-Tails that sealed it into a newborn boy and caused the fourth Hokage's life. 12 years after the Nine-Tails' attack at the Ninja Academy, Naruto Uzumaki's reputation as a delinquent and a troublemaker had earned him much infamy among the teachers and students. Iruko Umino, and to a lesser extent, the third Hokage, were the only two positive influences on him. Despite this, Naruto continued to fail the graduation exam, which required students to demonstrate how much they had learned by performing the clone technique. While Naruto was decently skilled, most of the basic techniques taught at the academy, for some reason he had never been able to perform this one correctly, causing him to fail the final exam for graduation. Mizuki, another academy examiner, used Naruto's depression after his most recent failure to trick Naruto into stealing the scroll of seals, a collection of forbidden techniques housed within the Hokage's study that could be dangerous in the wrong hands, claiming that Naruto could be automatically passed by simply learning a technique from the scroll and performing it successfully. Not when to pass up such an opportunity, Naruto immediately did so, using his sexy technique to distract the third Hokage long enough to escape with the scroll. Once he had fled to the neighboring woods, Naruto began his efforts in learning a technique from the scroll, the first of which happened to be the multiple shadow clone technique, something he wasn't happy about given his former failures with the ordinary clone technique. As search parties were sent out to find Naruto and retrieve the scroll, Iruko got to him first and found him to have been training the entire time. Ignorant of what he had done, Naruto simply repeated to Iruko what Mizuki had told him earlier, causing Iruko to realize that Mizuki was just trying to use Naruto to help him steal the scroll and later steal for himself. Just as Iruko realized this, Mizuki showed up to attack them both. After he injured Iruko, who had pushed Naruto out of the way of an attack, Mizuki tried to get Naruto to give him the scroll while Iruko tried to convince Naruto to keep it. Their argument led to Mizuki to tell Naruto the truth everyone would be keeping from him, that he was the container of the nine-tailed demon fox. Start Naruto ran off, leaving Iruka and Mizuki to fight each other. Naruto watched from a distance, eventually learning what Mizuki was after, as well as the true level of Iruka's devotion to Naruto. Just before Mizuki could kill Iruka, Naruto attacked Mizuki, threatening to kill him if he should ever touch his sensei again. Confident in his superiority, Mizuki claimed that he could beat Naruto with one attack, only for the exact opposite to happen. Using his newly learned multiple shadow clone technique, Naruto beat Mizuki to a bloody pulp. Impressed that Naruto could master such a difficult technique, Iruka let Naruto graduate, ironically fulfilling Mizuki's original promise. Upon graduating, Naruto was required to have his picture taken for identification purposes. Rather than having a standard picture, Naruto decided to paint his face and point at the camera in a menacing way. When the third Hokage learned of this, he told Naruto to retake the picture. To express his disagreement on this matter, Naruto used his sexy technique in an attempt to convince the third otherwise. Meanwhile, a young boy was watching the discussion and he used the opportunity to attempt an attack on the Hokage, only to fall flat upon his face. His sensei, Ebisu, pursued the boy into the room and caught a glimpse of Naruto, whom he recognized as the container of the demon fox. The boy accused Naruto of setting a trap for him and Naruto responded by grabbing hold of the boy. Ebisu ordered Naruto to let the boy go, informing Naruto that the boy is none other than the third Hokage's grandson. The boy, certain that Naruto, fearing the Hokage's wrath, will do no harm to him, taunted Naruto. Naruto, who whacked the boy in the head due to his lack of fear towards the boy's relatives. Ebisu ran to the boy's side, informing him that if he wanted to be Hokage someday, he should avoid people like Naruto. Later on, Naruto found the boy to be following him and at the same time doing a bad job of disguising himself. The boy, his cover blown, introduced himself as Konohamaru and expressed his desire to be taught the sexy technique due to his prior success at defeating the third Hokage in the hopes that using it will make him Hokage. Naruto agreed and took Konohamaru on as his disciple. To learn the technique, Naruto tried to improve Konohamaru's transformation technique by showing him naked women via pornographic magazines and taking him to women's bathhouses. Eventually, they arrived in the woods for the refinement of the technique, where Konohamaru explained that the people of the village didn't recognize him by his name, and instead referred to him only as the Hokage's grandson, which he grew tired of. Because of this, he hoped to become the Hokage himself so that people would finally recognize him properly. Soon after, Ebisu arrived to take Konohamaru home, lecturing all the while. At that moment, Konohamaru performed a perfect sexy technique, which only caused Ebisu to lecture Konohamaru further since he is not weak to such derogative techniques. Perplexed by the technique's apparent failure, Naruto used his harem technique, which succeeded in putting Ebisu out of commission. Konohamaru questioned why he was unable to defeat Ebisu by himself, and Naruto replied that becoming Hokage required a great deal of work for which there were no shortcuts. Konohamaru denounced their student-teacher relationship on the grounds that they were both rivals for the title of Hokage. Naruto made the observation that, since he was an actual ninja, he would be one step ahead of Konohamaru, but that he would look forward to the day that they meet in battle. In order to officially obtain the rank of Genin, academy students must be organized into groups of three to undergo a field evaluation administered by Jonin, who would be their squad leader should they pass. On the day of organization, Naruto made sure to have a good breakfast and headed off to the academy, where the groups were to be decided. Upon arriving there, Naruto showed off his forehead protector to the other students who thought he had failed. To Naruto's delight, Sakura Haruno started to approach him, however his glee was quickly stifled when Sakura pushed him out of the way so that she might sit next to Sasuke Uchiha, which would anger all the other girls in the room. Naruto, jealous of Sakura's affection for Sasuke, leaped out of the desk where they were sitting so that he could look Sasuke in the eye. To the disgust of Naruto, Sasuke, and every girl in the room, Naruto was bumped by another student and accidentally kissed Sasuke, earning him a beating from Sakura. As Naruto recovered, Iruka arrived to announce the three-man teams, and as he started listing the members of Team 7, Naruto was pleased and Sakura was sad to learn that the two would be on the same team. As the third member was revealed, Sakura was pleased and Naruto was sad to learn that Sasuke was that member, who happened to 
dislike being teamed with the both of them. As Irika announced the remaining teams, Hinata Hyuga, Kiba Inazuka, and Shino Abarame were revealed to compose Team 8. Shikamaru Nara, Choji Akamichi, and Ino Yamanaka were revealed to compose Team 10. Later, Sakura went off to look for Sasuke, ignoring Naruto, who wanted to have lunch with her. Angered that Sakura had yet again picked Sasuke over himself, Naruto formulated a plan to be with Sakura. Upon finding Sasuke alone in a room, Naruto leaped inside where an unseen fight ensued. As things settled down, Sasuke was shown to be the only one leaving. Later on, Sasuke approached Sakura, who expressed her feelings for him and her distaste for Naruto. As the two were about to kiss, Sasuke, who was revealed to be a transformed Naruto, suffered a violent stomach ache and ran off to the nearest bathroom. While Naruto dealt with his mysterious case of diarrhea, the real Sasuke approached Sakura. When she expressed her jealousy of Naruto for having no parents to know what to do, Sasuke stated that those without parents grew up lonely, and Sakura made him sick. Sasuke left the crush Sakura by herself, and she began to consider treating Naruto better. As Naruto finally exited the bathroom, he ran into Sasuke, and it seemed as though revenge on Sasuke's part was imminent. Elsewhere, the third Hokage took Kakashi Hatake, Team 7's reluctant Tony leader, on a tour of Naruto's home, and the latter noted that the milk Naruto seemed to have had for breakfast was expired, causing him to frequently head for the bathroom. Soon afterwards, the members of Team 7, after a long wait, finally met their Jonin sensei, who used the meeting as an opportunity for them to get to know one another. Kakashi went first and said he didn't feel like telling him anything about himself. Naruto proclaimed that he wanted to become Hokage one day and that he loved ramen. Sakura implied that she loved Sasuke and stated that she hated Naruto. Lastly, Sasuke asserted that he hated a lot of things, didn't like anything, and that he would someday kill a certain man that wronged him long ago. Kakashi ended the meeting by telling the others to be at the training grounds the next day with their ninja gear and advised them not to have breakfast. The next day, Kakashi arrived at the training ground last, four hours later than they planned. Kakashi then explained how the evaluation would work. It would be a survival battle in which the aim was to get each of the prospective students to take one of the two bells from Kakashi. It would be a survival battle in which the aim was for each of the prospective students to take one of the two bells from Kakashi. Anyone who didn't get a bell before noon would receive no lunch, which, as the others realized, was why he told them not to have breakfast. He then explained that because there were only two bells, at least one person would fail and return to the academy. He did, however, allow the others to use shuriken if they would like and inform them that they would fail if they attempted the mission with anything less than the intent to kill him. Naruto laughed at the suggestion, saying that Kakashi had no talent. Kakashi rebutted this, stating that class clowns were often the weakest link and that they didn't normally pose a threat, causing Naruto to attack Kakashi before the test had officially begun. Kakashi easily countered the attack and noted that he was starting to like the team due to Naruto's attack having the intent to kill. He then set off Team 7 to begin the test. As the test got underway, Sasuke and Sakura applied stealth methods, staying hidden from Kakashi. Naruto, however, decided that attacking Kakashi would work just as well, and called him out. As Naruto charged at Kakashi, the latter pulled out a book, Make Up Paradise, causing Naruto to hesitate slightly, though Kakashi assured him that the book wouldn't prevent him from defending against Naruto. Naruto began a series of attacks, each of which was dodged by Kakashi. Eventually, Kakashi ended up behind Naruto and used his 1,000 years of death to send Naruto into the nearby lake. Naruto recovered and attacked Kakashi with a number of shadow clones, whose quantity impressed Sasuke and Sakura. Kakashi evaded all the clones' attacks with body replacement technique, leaving them to fight amongst themselves, believing one of them is Kakashi. Upon realizing this, Naruto dismissed his clones and then noticed a bell lying under a nearby tree. When he went to pick it up, however, he was trapped in a snare set by Kakashi, leaving the young ninja dangling upside down. Kakashi retrieved the bell and lectured Naruto about falling for obvious traps. At that moment, Sasuke, believing Kakashi to be distracted, attacked Kakashi with a barrage of shuriken and kunai, apparently killing Kakashi. This, too, was revealed to be a trap, as the attack Kakashi turned into a log, a result of another body replacement technique. Sasuke, his location revealed, went off to find a new hiding spot, while Sakura went looking for Sasuke. As she searched for him, she was tricked by Kakashi's genjutsu, demonic illusion, hell viewing technique, and as she recovered, Sasuke fell prey to Kakashi's earth release double suicide decapitation technique. Naruto, using Kakashi's absence to his advantage, released himself from the snare and attempted to eat the lunches that Kakashi had left behind. However, Kakashi caught him in the act and tied Naruto to a wooden post. Noon eventually rolled around, and all three students had failed to get a bell. After their failure, Kakashi berated them for their lack of teamwork. He explained to them that the purpose of the exam was to work together and not to act independently as they had all done. He said that he would give them all a second chance after lunch and allowed Sakura and Sasuke to eat. However, he ordered that Naruto, because of his attempt to eat all the food himself, should be barred from eating at all, and that anyone who gave him food would fail automatically. After he left, Sakura and Sasuke realized that they'd need Naruto in top shape if they were to retrieve the bells and decided to defy Kakashi by feeding him. Kakashi, who had been watching, appeared before the Genin in a puff of smoke, a furious look upon his face. At this moment, the third Hokage elsewhere revealed to Iruka that Kakashi had never passed a team of Academy students, and that although the failure percentage was astounding, the reasons behind it were perfectly just. Back at the training grounds, Naruto, Sakura, and Sasuke claimed that they were a team, and that therefore if one of them failed, then they all failed. Quickly changing his attitude, Kakashi informed them that they had passed, reciting the exact message he was trying to get across as his reason. In the ninja world, those who don't follow the rules are scum, but those who abandon their friends are worse than scum. While Genin were normally assigned D-rank missions, Naruto insisted on doing something more exciting, and the third Hokage agreed to send them on a C-rank mission to escort Tazuna, a master bridge builder, back to the land of waves. During their mission, the team was attacked by two Chunin, enemies at a level that wasn't supposed to be encountered on a C-rank mission. Naruto, surprised by the Chunin's appearance, panicked and was struck by one of the Chunin's poisonous metal gauntlets. Sasuke, in Naruto's absence, dealt with the attackers quite efficiently and rubbed it in by one-upping Naruto and calling him a scaredy cat. Once the attackers had been restrained, Naruto bled out the poison he'd received by stabbing his wound of the kunai, swearing upon the pain in his hand to never freeze up and leave his friends to fend for themselves ever again. Kakashi, his suspicions raised by the attack, asked Tazuna for the truth about the circumstances of the mission. Tazuna explained that the land of ways had been taken over by a shipping magnate called Gato, who had effectively bankrupted all the people in the country, and that the only way to revitalize the economy was by building a bridge to the mainland that could render moot Gato's shipping monopoly. However, Gato did not want that to happen and used shinobi gangs to assert his control. Team 7's actual mission was to support 
support and protect the bridge building efforts that have been thwarted thus far. Upon arrival at the Land of Waves and on the way to Tazuna's home, Naruto, bent on outdoing Sasuke, threw a kunai at a bush, surprising the ninja and putting them on guard. Once it was clear that it was nothing, Sakura yelled at him for his apparent mistake, but Naruto threw another kunai in a bush in the other direction. Sakura hit him on the head this time, though Naruto swore he had sensed something. As it turned out, he had sensed a snow rabbit, which was now scared out of its mind with the kunai only an inch from its head. Naruto apologized to it and sympathized profusely with the rabbit, picking it up and hugging it to an extreme. While the others dismissed these antics as Naruto's usual idiocy, Kakashi noticed something strange about this rabbit. Its fur was white. Snow rabbits are only white during winter, meaning that this rabbit had been raised indoors and therefore belonged to somebody nearby. Kakashi suddenly told everyone to duck as a giant sword spun past and nearly killing them all. The sword embedded itself in a tree, and Zabuza Momochi, the missing ninja from Kirigakure, jumped onto its handle, intent on killing Tazuna. Kakashi, recognizing Zabuza as a formidable opponent, revealed his Sharingan, saying that he will need to use it. Zabuza, honored by Kakashi's willingness to go all out for their battle, stated that he would consider it a testament to his own skill if he were to kill Kakashi. Zabuza ended the conversation with his hiding a mist technique, summoning a thick veil of mist from the nearby lake in order to hide himself from the Sharingan. Kakashi ordered Team 7 to protect Tazuna, though Zabuza asserted that such protection was useless, instantly appearing at the center of their formation. As Zabuza was about to make an attack with the sword, Kakashi raced towards him and stabbed Zabuza in the stomach with his kunai just before his stroke could fall. Water poured out of Zabuza's body and it collapsed into a puddle as the real Zabuza appeared behind Kakashi, revealing that Zabuza had used his water clone technique to fool Kakashi. Zabuza proceeded to slice Kakashi in half, but Kakashi's body too dissolved into water, surprising Zabuza as he realized that Kakashi's sharing gun must have copied his water clone technique as Zabuza charged towards him. Kakashi appeared behind Zabuza, mocking him by saying that it was over. To everyone's surprise, a second Zabuza appeared behind Kakashi and grabbed him, and the first Zabuza reverted to a pool of water. Kakashi attempted to break free of Zabuza's grasp, but was instead thrown into the nearby lake. As he emerged, Zabuza trapped him within his water prison technique, leaving Naruto, Sasuke, and Sakura to defend against another of Zabuza's clones. Kakashi told the Genin to run, but Naruto remembered the oath that he had made to himself, and entered the fight so they could save Kakashi and keep Tazuna alive. Naruto created a number of shadow clones that proceeded to completely surround Zabuza's water clone. Zabuza's clone swung his sword, and the shadow clones scattered and disappeared, forcing the only remaining Naruto to reach into his backpack and pull out a Fuma Shuriken, which he gave to Sasuke. Sasuke, sensing Naruto's plan, hurled the Fuma Shuriken at Zabuza, who easily grabbed it from the air. To his surprise, a second Shuriken was hiding in the shadow of the first due to Sasuke's shadow Shuriken technique, and Zabuza was forced to leap over it to avoid being damaged. Once past Zabuza, the second Shuriken turned into Naruto, who had transformed himself. Naruto threw a kunai at Zabuza, who, unable to dodge it while maintaining the water prison technique, was forced to release Kakashi from his prison in order to avoid the attack. With Kakashi free, Zabuza was forced to commence their battle, and the two used multiple water release techniques against each other. Due to his Sharingan, Kakashi was able to take the upper hand and defeat Zabuza with Zabuza's own attack. Just as Kakashi was about to make the final blow, a masked ninja, later revealed to be named Haku, appeared to kill Zabuza by impaling Zabuza's neck with several senbon. After revealing himself to be a hunter nin sent to kill Zabuza, he disappeared with Zabuza's body. Kakashi, momentarily satisfied with this turn of events, decided that it was time to continue escorting Tazuna home, only to collapse due to chakra exhaustion seconds later as a result of overuse of his Sharingan. Kakashi is later seen bedridden, with a crutch as a result of his battle. Kakashi was taken to Tazuna's home for recovery, and as he rested, he made the observation that Zabuza's apparent death was odd. When the hunter didn't kill their target, they usually destroyed on the spot. On the other hand, the ninja who they met had taken Zabuza's body elsewhere instead of operating immediately. This, coupled with the fact that Zabuza had been killed with Senbon, weapons that were rarely fatal and also useful to knocking people out, led Kakashi to believe that Zabuza was still alive and that he'd be back to finish Tazuna's assassination. Elsewhere, Zabuza was revived by Haku, and although he would need time to recover, he promised to crush Kakashi when the next met. With Zabuza's return a likely outcome, Kakashi took Team 7 to the nearby woods for chakra training, and told them that the training would require them to learn to climb trees without using their hands. Naruto made the observation that this is impossible, but Kakashi, in crutches, manages to climb a tree with ease, and explained that the way they do it was focusing chakra on the soles of the feet. The three Genin all made an attempt. Naruto, not using enough chakra, took only one step before falling back into the ground. Sasuke was able to make it a good distance up the trunk, though he damaged it as a result of using too much chakra, and Sakura, having perfect control over her chakra, made it to a high branch on her first attempt, finishing her training. For the boys, however, the training continues, and Naruto, still unable to make it far up the tree, asked Sakura for advice. Sakura complied, and Kakashi made the observation that Naruto was finally getting a good grasp on teamwork. Sakura was left in charge of protecting Tazuna while Naruto and Sasuke continued their training. As Naruto began to catch up to Sasuke, Sasuke casually asked to know what advice Sakura had given Naruto, but Naruto, determined to beat Sasuke, refused to give it away. During dinner one night, Sakura asked about a torn picture that Inari, Tazuna's grandson, had been looking at. Tazuna explains that the man in the missing portion of the picture was Kaiza, Inari's father, whom Inari had idolized and thought of as his biological parent, though Kaiza had adopted him. One day, years prior, a flood had threatened to destroy the village, and Kaiza had single handedly managed to close the floodgates, earning him the title of hero amongst the villagers. Once Gato came to the country, however, Kaiza's heroic deeds angered Gato, and therefore Gato had him executed in front of the villagers, including Inari. From that day forth, the villagers lost hopes and Inari was crushed, disbelieving the impossible existence of a hero. Naruto, determined to prove to Inari that there was such thing as a hero, rushed off to continue his training. As Naruto rested in the woods one day, he encountered Haku, though he was unaware of Haku's identity and thought of him to just be a pretty girl. The two discussed their dreams. Naruto wished to become the Kage of his village, while Haku wanted to protect the person most precious to him, explaining that when he was protecting a precious person, one's strength reached its maximum. Naruto agreed with the statement, remembering all the people who protected him. With that, Haku left, but not before confusing Naruto to no end by asserting that he was a boy. Training for Naruto and Sasuke continued, and eventually the two were able to climb the very tops of their trees, though Naruto was exhausted as a result. Seeing Naruto in this condition, a tearful Inari proclaimed that Naruto was wasting his time and that Gato would still defeat him. Naruto replied that he will win and sarcastically congratulated Inari for always
suggestion that Naruto was the only person present who knew what Inari was going through touched Inari. The next morning, Kakashi, Sasuke, and Sakura escorted Tuzun to work at the bridge, leaving Naruto behind arrest. Upon arriving at the bridge, however, they found Tuzun's workers to have been attacked, the area quickly becoming covered with a veil of mist. After a quick defeat of Zabuza's water clones at the hands of Sasuke, Zabuza and a masked Haku revealed themselves, confirming Kakashi's suspicions. Back at Tuzun's house, two of Gato's thugs arrived to kidnap Inari's mother. Inari, inspired by Naruto's story, attempted to save his mother by himself. As he was just about to be cut down by the thugs, Naruto appeared and defeated the two single handedly. Naruto congratulated Inari for finally standing up for himself and left to join the rest of his team. Back at the bridge, Sasuke battled with Haku, and Zabuza was surprised to find that Sasuke could keep up with Haku's speed. Haku, also noticing Sasuke's capabilities, decided to use his trump card, demonic mirroring ice crystals, which trapped Sasuke in a cage of ice. Haku proceeded to pummel Sasuke with wave after wave of Senbon barrages, which were made effectively undodgeable as a result of Haku's technique. Eventually, Naruto arrived and managed a sneak attack on Haku. Just as Zabuza was about to attack Naruto, Haku asked to be the one to fight him, to which Zabuza agreed. Sasuke began to formulate a plan, thinking that it'd be easier to defeat Haku with Naruto attacking from the outside. To his dismay, Naruto entered the cage of ice to see how Sasuke was doing, and he too became a prisoner of Haku's technique. Naruto and Sasuke both attempted to destroy the ice mirrors, but were unsuccessful. This turn of events led Kakashi to believe that Haku was using a Keke Genkai, and that Naruto and Sasuke had no chance of winning. Because of this, he once again revealed his Sharingan, expressing his desire to finish the battle quickly. Zabuza explained that he had learned how to defeat the Sharingan and disappeared into the mist. As Kakashi instructed Sakura to guard Tazuna, Zabuza struck, revealing to Kakashi that Zabuza was now attacking with his eyes closed, making the Sharingan's ocular genjutsu useless. Zabuza, explaining that his specialty is killing people based on purely sound, attempted to finish off Tazuna, but Kakashi made himself into a human shield at the last second. Heavily injured, Kakashi resorted to using an attack that he himself had created. Meanwhile, the fight between Haku and Naruto and Sasuke continued, with the two Genin having sustained heavy wounds. Sasuke, however, was starting to dodge Haku's attacks. Haku, noticing this, attempted to attack an exhausted Naruto instead, but Sasuke managed to pull Naruto out of the way. A shocked Haku noticed Sasuke's eyes, and it was revealed that as a member of the Uchiha clan, Sasuke had finally awoken his own Kekagenkai, the Sharingan, which allowed him to see Haku's movements with ease. Haku, fearing for his success at winning the battle, goes for a finishing blow upon Naruto, but Sasuke rushes Naruto's side to stop the attack with his own body. When Naruto woke up, he found a severely wounded Sasuke standing over him. When Naruto asked Sasuke why he had saved him, he replied that it was merely instinct and fell into Naruto's arms. After admitting that he had promised not to die before killing his brother, Sasuke fell unconscious, and Haku asked Naruto whether it was the first time he'd witness death. Naruto, enraged by the apparent loss of Sasuke, began to emit a visible chakra, and Haku noted that it was pure evil. As the chakra poured out, Naruto's wounds began to heal, and he acquired claws, fangs, and slitted pupils. Zabuza and Kakashi both sensed this new chakra, and each initially wondered whether it belonged to the other Jonin, but Zabuza noted that the chakra was far too powerful to belong to Kakashi, and Kakashi was able to recognize it as that of the Nine-Tailed Fox. Kakashi, worried about the seal keeping the Nine-Tailed Fox within Naruto would break soon, decided to pull out all the stops, and drew a scroll, smeared his blood on it, and told Zabuza that they should now end the battle. A transformed Naruto began to attack Haku, who attempted to counter with a barrage of needles, which were easily repelled by Naruto's roar. Haku attempted a physical attack, but Naruto was able to dodge it and grab a now fleeing Haku in an instant. After releasing a large amount of chakra, Naruto gave Haku a deafening punch in the face, sending him flying through a nearby mirror and destroying all the other mirrors as a result. Once Haku's body came to a stop, he rose, and Naruto charged at him so he could give the finishing blow. As he did so, Haku's mask began to crack and break away, revealing the face of the boy whom Naruto had met in the woods. Mere inches from Haku's face, Naruto stopped his attack and returned to his normal form. Haku questioned why Naruto spared him, only to receive a weak punch to the face. Haku explained that with his defeat had come his uselessness to Zabuza, and that because he could no longer protect Zabuza, his most precious person, he should die. Naruto didn't understand the reason for wanting death, but Haku began to plead for it nonetheless. With the bloodstained scroll, Kakashi summoned a number of dogs to find and restrain Zabuza. Explaining that he had allowed Zabuza to injure him so he could acquire Zabuza's scent, Kakashi proclaimed that he would finally be the end of Zabuza. With that, Kakashi gathered chakra in his hand and readied his lightning cutter for use on Zabuza. Meanwhile, Haku had finally managed to persuade Naruto to kill him, using Sasuke's apparent death as a reason for revenge. Naruto prepared a kunai and charged at Haku, hoping that death would make Haku's dreams come true, but at the last moment, Haku stopped the attack. He apologized, saying he couldn't die yet, and disappeared. Kakashi charged towards Zabuza while at the same time, a number of mirrors begin to surround Zabuza as protection. As Lightning Cutter made contact with flesh, Needle struck the bloody scroll, and the dogs holding Zabuza in place disappeared. Kakashi's surprise, he impaled Haku, who had used the last of his strength to grab hold of Kakashi. Elsewhere, Inari was going door to door in an attempt to rally support for taking down Gato and his men. The villagers, not wanting to fight back anymore, refused, to which Inari replied that he would protect those that he loved, as crying wouldn't save anyone. Once he got home, Inari's mother pleaded for him not to go, but Inari insisted that as Kaiza's son, he must. As he left the house, Inari was startled to find many shadowy figures surrounding his door. Naruto, confused by Haku's disappearance, rushed towards the figures he could see in the now fading mist. Upon his arrival, he found the gruesome scene of Haku's death, and Zabuza preparing to make good use of the opportunity Haku had given him. As Zabuza was about to finish the swing of his sword, Kakashi jumped out of the way, taking Haku's body with him. After removing his hand from Haku's body and laying the body down, Kakashi ordered Naruto to stay out of the fight. Sakura, now noticing Naruto, asked where Sasuke was. When Naruto looked away and didn't reply, she guessed at what had happened and quickly escorted Tazuna to Sasuke's body, where she broke the shinobi rules and cried. Zabuza, meanwhile, was unable to touch Kakashi, and every attempt to strike him down, he was now thrown backwards. 
With one such parry, one of Zabuza's arms was made useless, and with another attack by Kakashi, the other arm was put out of commission. As Zabuza's defenseless system was made apparent, Gato and his forces arrived to take the assassination of Tezuna into their own hands. As Zabuza and Kakashi decided that they no longer have a reason to fight each other, Gato noticed Haku's body and defiled it as vengeance for an injury Haku had earlier given him. This, coupled with Zabuza's indifference, infuriated Naruto, leading him to decide that Zabuza was still his enemy. Naruto explained how Haku had felt about Zabuza and how Haku would have done anything within his power to serve Zabuza. As Naruto decried how Haku had died as a tool and then never achieved his dreams, Zabuza broke into tears, admitting defeat to Naruto. As he began to reflect on the pureness of Haku's heart and the devotion that Haku had held towards him, Zabuza tore away the cloth covering his mouth and borrowed a kunai from Naruto. Catching the kunai in his mouth, Zabuza charged through Gato's forces, slaying anyone who got in his way while even being stabbed many times. Upon reaching Gato, Zabuza proclaimed that he would not be able to go to the same resting place as Haku, and that he would be taking Gato with him to hell. With that, Zabuza ended Gato's life. Using the last of his energy, he thanked Haku for everything and apologized, falling to the ground with exhaustion. As Zabuza's life began to fade, Sasuke awakened, overjoying Sakura to no end. After asking Sakura to release him, Sasuke asked of Haku's fate. Learning that he died, Sasuke realized that Haku had never meant to kill him or Naruto. Sakura called out to Naruto that Sasuke was alright, and Naruto was overwhelmed by the good news. Gato's men, meanwhile, were now without a paycheck and decided to loot the town as their payment for coming. As Naruto and Kakashi both exhausted tried to figure out what to do, an arrow fell to the ground in front of the imposing forces. Everyone's attention was drawn to its source, Inari and the entirety of the town's population would come to start protecting themselves. To contribute to the already intimidating forces, Naruto and Kakashi used what little chakra they have left to create what appears to be a large number of shadow clones, causing the mercenary to flee to the boat that they used to get to the bridge. Kakashi approached Zabuza, who asked to see Haku one last time. Kakashi complied and laid Zabuza's broken body alongside Haku's. As snow began to fall, Zabuza asked Haku whether he was crying, and asserted that, just as as Haku had always been by his side in life, he was now by Haku's side in death. With his last breath, he expressed his desire to go to the same afterlife as Haku, if he only could. Kakashi remarked that Zabuza would be able to be with Haku in death, as they would go to the afterlife together. Haku and Zabuza were buried side by side, and Naruto, having witnessed the fate of the shinobi, decided to live his life his own way, not letting others tell him how. The bridge was completed, and Team 7 prepared to leave. As they bade farewell to Tazuna and his family, Naruto told Inari that it was okay to cry. Inari, saying that he didn't want to, said the same thing to Naruto, who also said that he didn't want to. As Naruto walked away, both broke into tears, causing Sakura to call them both idiots. As they all disappeared in the distance, Tazuna proclaimed that the bridge would be called the Great Naruto Bridge to signify the strength that Naruto gave Inari, who in turn spread to the whole town. Chunin exams. Team 7 returned to Konoha to continue with their lives as regular Genin. One day, whilst playing with Konohamaru, Udon, and Moegi, Naruto met three Genin from Tsunagakure, Gara, Konkoro, and Tamari, and learned that they were in Konoha to participate in the Chunin selection exams. Meanwhile, Kakashi, Asuma, and Kuranai all volunteered their teams to the exam as well. Naruto was thrilled with the possibility of becoming a Chunin. The first part of the exam, proctored by Ibiki Marina, was written, but it was not a test of knowledge as much as a test of information gathering and willpower. The first nine questions were supposed to be obtained by cheating, where the Genin must use any techniques to find out the correct answer of being caught. Naruto, who did not realize this, went into a traumatic state in which he felt that he would cause his entire team to be eliminated as he did not know the answer to any of the questions. Sasuke realized that he too did not know the answers, but immediately activated his shotgun to copy someone else's answers. Sakura, as a testament to her incredible intellect, answered all the questions quickly, a feat that the examiner later said could not be accomplished at Genin level. The last question was a do or die question. If one didn't answer, one's entire team failed the tuning exams, but if one answered incorrectly, one would remain a Genin forever. Naruto showed that he was not a quitter when he exclaimed that he didn't care if he said a Genin forever and that, even if it came to pass, he would still become Hokage. The Genin who chose to answer the first question all passed the first part of the tuning exams, including Naruto who didn't answer a single question on the written part of the exam. The second part of the exam, proctored by Uncle Midorashi, was a survival exam in the 44th training ground also known as the Forest of Death. During this part, Naruto found himself in a desperate situation against Orochimaru, an s rank missing in from Konoha, so powerful that the third Hokage later mentioned there was nobody in Konoha that could fight him equally. It turned out that Orochimaru used to be one of the third Hokage's pupils, also known as the Sanin. Naruto and Sasuke's reaction to the situation were a complete reversal of what happened in the Land of Waves mission. Sasuke was frozen with fear while Naruto fought on fearlessly, at one point stopping Orochimaru's huge summon snake in its tracks on his own, with the help of some demon fox chakra, and muttering to Sasuke in a moment of glorious retribution that marked another milestone of the rivalry, you're not hurt, are you, scaredy cat? Naruto eventually snapped Sasuke out of his panic. However, Orochimaru used the five element seal on Naruto, disrupting the flow of the demon fox's chakra as well as Naruto's own. However, Orochimaru was too much for Sasuke as well. In the end, Orochimaru put a curse seal of heaven onto Sasuke's neck, saying that Sasuke would eventually come to him for the power he needed to kill his brother, Itachi Uchiha. Orochimaru then left, sending his three Genin, Team Dosu from Otogakure, to go after Sasuke. Meanwhile, Anko was informed of the corpses of three Genin from Kusagakure. She recognized one of them as Shiore. She found out that someone must have killed the Genin and used their faces to disguise themselves and enter the exams. She suspected that the Shiore who took the exams was actually Orochimaru. She ran off to confront Orochimaru only to have her curse seal of heaven reactivated by him. Orochimaru warned her not to stop the exams. While both Naruto and Sasuke were unconscious from the fight against Orochimaru, Sakura had to take care of them. It was there that Sakura's personality reached a turning point. As Kintsuchi of Team Dosu trapped her by roughly holding her by her hair, Sakura realized how pathetic her behavior was, always blindly praising and criticizing others when she was the one who hadn't improved at all. She reflected on herself, thinking of how she was always telling Naruto that she was better than him when he was the one who had been consistently improving, and telling Sasuke she loved him when she couldn't even muster up enough strength to protect him as a teammate, before she symbolically freed herself by cutting off her long hair with a kunai, which she initially kept long because it had been rumored that Sasuke liked girls with long hair. 
She also decided to fight against the Oto Genin and resolved to no longer be dependent on her teammates. At this point, Team 10 arrived on the scene. Rock Lee fought the Oto Ninja and used the Front Lotus on Dosu, who was saved by Zaku, but admitted that the Lotus still almost killed him. Rock Lee is then defeated by Dosu. Team 10 fights the Oto Ninja to save Sakura, but ultimately fails. The rest of Team 9 arrives at the scene. Dosu Kanuda, leader of Team Dosu, mentioned that Edgy could see through them, but before an Edgy could attack, an awakened Sasuke intervened. The curse seal on Sasuke had by now started to take effect, and in a state of insanity and murderous intent, Sasuke defeated Zaku Abumi of Team Dosu, going as far as to dislocate his shoulders for no other reason to cause him pain. Before he could do any more damage to anyone else, however, Sakura hugged Sasuke, crying and begging him to stop, allowing Sasuke to regain control of the seal. Dosu left with his teammates, wondering why Orochimaru had sent him to kill Sasuke if he had known that Sasuke would have the curse seal. Team 7 still managed to make it past the second stage by defeating Team Oboro of Amagakure, with a little help from Kabuto Yakushi, a fellow ninja from Konoha. Seven teams managed to pass, which was more than twice as many as had been expected. To cut down the prevailing Genin from the second exam, a preliminary round was staged before the third and final stage of the Junior exams. The 21 people, or 20 after Kabutu withdrew, were to be matched up with each other in a fight that lasted until somebody gave in or was unable to continue fighting. The proctor of the third exam, Hayate Gekko, did reserve the right to step in and stop the fight when he felt that there was a clear winner. Sakura at first attempted to tell the examiners that the cursed seal that Orochimaru had placed on Sasuke was seriously debilitating him, but Sasuke stopped her and told her to mind her business. At that point, Naruto stepped in to stand up for Sakura, but was swiftly silenced by Sasuke, who acknowledged Naruto by declaring that he was one one of the people he wanted to fight. Later on, Naruto would return the sentiment. The first matchup was Sasuke Uchiha against a member of Kabuto's team, Yorai Okado. Before the fight started, Kakashi warned Sasuke that if his cursed seal got out of control, he would have to intervene and stop the match to control the seal. This barred Sasuke from using any technique, as the seal responds to the flows of chakra. The match started with Yorai stealing Sasuke's chakra with his chakra absorption. The match seemed hopeless for Sasuke until he heard Naruto's taunts. Next to him was Rock Lee, which gave Sasuke an idea. He used the Lion Combo, a partial copy of Rock Lee's Front Lotus, which had been captured by Sasuke's Sharingan. Yorai was knocked unconscious, and Sasuke advanced in the next round. After the fight, Kakashi took Sasuke away to seal the cursed seal. Up next were Zaku Abumi and Shino Aburame of Konohagakure's Team 8. Zaku apparently only had one functional arm, but he bet he could win regardless. Elsewhere, the cursed seal was sealed by Kakashi, but then Orochimaru showed up for Sasuke, asserting that all the Genin he currently had at his command were disposable. As Kakashi readied his lightning cutter, Shino commanded a multitude of insects to attack Zaku from behind, leaving the one-armed Zaku unable to defend himself with his unidirectional technique. Zaku then revealed that he could use both arms, but it was too late. The insects had blocked the tubes in Zaku's arms, building up the chakra he was trying to use and making the arms explode, thus ending the fight. Orochimaru left, saying that Sasuke would be his someday. The match with Misumi Surugi against Konkuro of Tsunagakure's three sand siblings began. Misumi quickly used soft physique modification to restrain Konkuro and threatened to snap his neck. Until it was revealed that the Konkuro Misumi was fighting was just a puppet. The real Konkuro was disguised, controlling the puppet with the puppet technique. He used the puppet Karasu to crush Misumi's bones, defeating him. The fourth match, Sakura vs. Ino of Konohagakure's Team 10, was particularly meaningful as the two were rivals. The match dragged down for a very long time since they seemed to be quite on par until Ino tried to possess Sakura's body to force her to forfeit the match. However, Sakura's will expelled Ino from her mind. Exhausted and out of chakra, they both both went for a final attack, hitting each other at the exact same time and rendering each other unconscious. Hayate declared that neither of them would move on to the next round. The fifth match was Tenten of Konohagakure's team Gaia against Tamari of Tsunagakure's Sen siblings. The match was over quickly, as all the projectile weapons used by Tenten were completely countered by with the wind release techniques used by Tamari, who won without taking as much as a single scratch. Rock Lee jumped down to avenge Tamari's treatment of Tenten, but Mike Guy stopped what would have turned into a fight. The sixth match, Shikamaru Naru of Konohagakure's team 10 against Kintsuchi, was next, with Shikamaru aware that he was at a disadvantage. Since Kid had seen him use the Shadow Imitation Technique in the Force of Death without showing her own fighting style, Kin started by dodging the Shadow Imitation Technique and throwing Senbun with and without bells, using strings turning the bells from unexpected positions to divert Shikamaru's attention and attack from behind. Shikamaru, however, managed to join a shadow with its, using the shadows of the strings that she was holding. With Kin matching Shikamaru's movements, each drew a shuriken and flung them at each other. When it came time for them to duck, Shikamaru ducked successfully, but Kin, having previously retreated, banged her head against the wall and knocked herself out, which turned out to be the true goal of Shikamaru's battle strategy. Shikamaru emerged as the winner. Naruto, still impaired by the five element seal, was matched up with Kiba of Konohagakure's team 8 in the seventh match. The fight went poorly for Naruto at first, especially after Kiba's Ninken Akamaru joined the fight and transformed into Kiba with the human beast clone technique. Naruto made a comeback by transforming in a layered fashion into Akamaru and then Kiba, so that when Kiba attacked Naruto, the second transformation as Kiba gave way to the first as Akamaru. Maru, leading Kiba to attack Akamaru, still affected by a beast human clone. Kiba then focused on attacking intensively to keep Naruto from counterattacking until Naruto accidentally broke wind, which stunned Kiba, whose sense of smell was magnified a thousand times at the time. Naruto then beat Kiba by using shadow clones to perform a new technique, the Naruto Uzumaki combo. The eighth match brought a family rivalry to the forefront as Hinata and Neji of the Hyuga clan battled. Kiba, being born away on a stretcher, urged Hinata to forfeit. At first, Neji assaulted Hinata psychologically, using her fears to convince her that she had no possibility of winning. However, after being inspired by Naruto's courage, Hinata decided to fight and prove that she could be brave as well. They both fought using the Hyuga Gentle Fist style and the Byaku. Gun, a Kekai Genkai which Kakashi started to surpass the Sharingan. While they initially seemed to the observers to be equally matched, Neji managed to interrupt Hinata's chakra flow in her arms, disabling her ability to use Gentle Fist. Hinata still tried to go on and it was only the exam proctor's intervention that stopped Neji from killing her. Hinata's bravery still managed to inspire Naruto as he vowed to battle and win against Neji in the third exam. The ninth match pitted Lee against Gara of Tsunogakure's Sand siblings. At first, none of Rock Lee's taijutsu attacks managed to penetrate or circumvent Gara's shield of sand until Lee removed the weights he was wearing around his legs. 
The boost of speed was such that Gaara's sand couldn't follow Lee's movements, and Gaara was hit for the first time in his life. However, Gaara was revealed to be using armor of sand to keep Lee's attacks from working on him. Realizing that his normal attacks would no longer work, Lee then used his front lotus on Gaara, but in the end it was revealed that he'd been a sand clone. Having no other way to end the match, and with Guy's permission, Lee opened five of the inner chakra gates. The result being Lee's strength was multiplied immensely for a short time, but also severely injured him. He then proceeded to continuously beat Gaara with his reverse lotus. However, as Gaara fell to the ground, he dispersed his sand gourd as a cushion to break his fall. Gaara then used his sand binding coffin to crush Rock Lee's left arm and leg. My guy jumped down to prevent Gaara from killing Lee and regretted having taught Lee how to open the inner gates after learning from Medical Ninja that Lee could no longer be a ninja due to his intense injuries. Gaara won the match. The last match was Choji Akamichi of Konoha Kokoda's Team 10 versus Dosa Kanuda. Choji was reluctant to battle, instead wanted to forfeit, but tried after being promised food by his sensei, Asuma Saratobi. If he won, Choji entered the battle with prior knowledge of Dosu's sound-based attacks and quickly used human bullet tank to plug his ears from the Oath Ninja's attacks. However, Dosu overcame this by transmitting his sound through the water in Choji's body, thus defeating him. After the preliminary ends and drawing lots to determine the first round matchups in the main tournament, there was a one month period in which the remaining Genin could prepare themselves. Various dignitaries were also invited to watch the main matches. During this month, Naruto met Jiraiya, another Sanian, for the first time. Jiraiya agreed to be a sensei and was the one who taught him the most advanced techniques he learned during that time. Under Jiraiya, Naruto improved his chakra control by practicing walking on water, learning to call upon the Demon Fox's energy at will after Jiraiya used the Five Elements on Seal to cancel Ojimaru's Five Elements Seal, and had to use the summoning technique to call the giant toad Gamabunta to his aid, but was so exhausted after completing his training that Gamabunta carried him to the hospital. Also during the month of training, Dosu, who was trying to sneak up on and kill Gara, was ripped to shreds by him. Hayate was murdered by Baki, the Jonin of the Sand siblings, after he overheard Baki talking with Kabuto about their plans to invade Konoha. Gara also attempted to assassinate Lee in the hospital on the day before the finals, but was stopped by Naruto and Chikamaru. Gara revealed his past, which led to Naruto's realizing that they had similar histories of prejudice before Guy stepped in and forced Gara to leave. Due to the fact that Hayate Gekko was murdered during the one month break, Genma Shiranui became the new proctor for the final exam. The first match was Naruto against Neji. Naruto's fight with Neji in the first match of the finals was a very dramatic one. During that fight, Neji lectured Naruto as he had done with Hinata during the preliminaries, telling Naruto that failures remained failures and that this could not change. Naruto eventually won the battle through a combination of the Demon Fox's power sealed within him and sheer belief in victory. In the process, he changed Neji's outlook on life and inspired him to create his own fate, thus forming another important bond. Naruto was able to make Neji understand that destiny could be changed, and they became very good friends from that point on. The second match, which featured Sasuke vs. Gaara, was moved to be the last, as Sasuke hadn't arrived yet. Normally he would have been disqualified on the spot, but his match had been highly anticipated. In fact, some of the crowd commented that they mostly came to just see him fight, forcing the third Hokage to give in to Kazakage's request to post by the match. The third match, which featured Shino vs. Konkuro, was given to Shino on default since Konkuro forfeited to keep his techniques secret before the invasion was launched. The fourth match was Tamari vs. Shikamaru, as both Tamari and Shikamaru were excellent strategists, but Shikamaru was better. Although it appeared throughout the match that Shikamaru was using pointless attacks, he was actually five steps ahead. And managed to skillfully manipulate Tamari into a position where he could attack from behind, using the tunnel which Naruto had dug during his match with Neji to stealthily extend his shadow imitation technique. This took control over Tamari's body and forced her to imitate every one of Shikamaru's movements. Although Shikamaru could have won, he quit instead, saying that he's too low on chakra. His real reason for quitting, however, seems to be because he's incredibly lazy and saw no point in winning, which would have only led to having to fight in further matches. He also didn't want to hurt a girl. Gara vs Sasuke came around again. This is the battle that the crowd had been looking forward to. Sasuke arrived right in time, and the match was about to begin. Sasuke demonstrated that his speed had vastly increased to the point where the sand guarding Gara could not keep up. Sasuke also demonstrated Chidori, a technique that he had learned from Kakashi and Kakashi's only original technique to injure Gara. Before the match could finish, however, a smoke bomb was set off in the Kage's box. Kabuto, who was actually working for Rochimaru, used Genjutsu to put almost everyone in the crowd to sleep, and the Konoha Crush commenced. Konoha Crush! With the invasion of Konoha's start, Suna and Oto ninja pour into Konoha using giant snakes to topple the village's protective wall. As this goes on, the fourth Kazakage holds a kunai to the third Hokage's neck, holding him hostage and allowing them both to get to the roof of their sitting area without confrontation. As Anbu members try to come to the third's rescue, the Kazakage's minions erect the four violet flames formation, preventing anyone from getting in or out. As the Kazakage begins to mock the third for getting so old and even going so far as to call him Sensei, the third realizes that the Kazakage is actually Orochimaru in disguise, who sheds his disguise so that he can face his former master face to face. The third Hokage, knowing that Orochimaru has come to kill him, removes his Hokage outfit, revealing his fighting gear underneath. Orochimaru comments that the third came prepared for the battle, and the two stare each other down. When one of the tiles on the roof cracks, they begin their battle. The third starts by sending hundreds of shuriken at Orochimaru, who blocks them by summoning three coffins to shield himself. The third, recognizing the coffins, deduces what Orochimaru is trying to do and attempts to stop the coffin summonings. However, only two coffins open, and the reanimated corpses of the first and second Hokage step out. The two deceased Hokages greet the third and comment on the impressiveness of Orochimaru being able to summon them. In response, the third states that he regrets having to see the two again as opponents and tells him to prepare for defeat. Orochimaru prepares the two Hokages for battle, removing the effects that death has had on their bodies and erasing their personality. Angered by Orochimaru's use of his former teachers, the third attacks the group, though his efforts are neutralized and he's thrown back and restrained by the first Hokage's ability to summon trees. Realizing he's outnumbered, the third summons Enma to help him in battle, who transforms into a large staff to give the third a weapon. With Enma in hand, the third tries to attack Orochimaru, though he's repelled by the other two Hokages. Using this failure as an opportunity, the third plants explosive tags in the two Hokages, taking away each of their legs. The legs, however, regenerate, showing the third that conventional attacks are useless. Out of options, the third prepares to use the only jutsu that will work, though Orochimaru first decides to show him something. Removing the mask he had been wearing, Orochimaru reveals his true face, that of a young woman whose body 
body Orochimaru had stolen and begun to occupy. Recognizing this as Orochimaru's success in finally achieving a path to immortality, the search for which he had been expelled from Konoha for, the third begins to understand why Orochimaru had come to Konoha, to take the body of Sasuke Uchiha. Determined not to let this happen and to rectify his mistake of allowing Orochimaru to escape years earlier, the third creates two shadow clones. All the thirds prepare to use Dead Demon Consuming Seal, a technique that the third claims Orochimaru, despite his extensive knowledge of Jutsus, had never seen before. As the demon called forth by the seal, only able to be seen by the third, readies itself, the third is forced to endure the other two Hokage's blows, weakening his old body even more. As soon as the seal is ready for use, the third's shadow clones each grab hold of a Hokage, and the demon plunges his hands into each. Momentarily regaining their senses, the Hokages all apologize to each other, the first and second for the trouble they've caused the third, and the third for the fate he sent them to. The demon pulls the souls of the first and second from their body and seals them within the bodies of the third shadow clones, causing the clones to disappear in a puff of smoke. No longer inhabited, the first and second's bodies dissolve, revealing themselves to be in actuality the bodies of Zaku, Abumi, and Kinsuchi, two Genin Orochimaru had entered the Chunin exam and now sacrifice for his means. Angered by Orochimaru's careless use of his subordinates, the third grabs Enma and exchanges blows with Orochimaru and his Kusanagi sword. Throwing the Kusanagi and Enma aside, the third grabs onto Orochimaru and the demon of the seal plunges his hand into Orochimaru. Sensing that his soul is being removed from his body, Orochimaru calls his Kusanagi to him, stabbing the third in the back. This chain of events forces the third to halt the removal of Orochimaru's soul, the latter of which questions why he didn't block the attack. The third explains that in exchange for using the sealing technique, the user is sentenced to death, as was demonstrated by its use by the fourth Hokage of the demon fox years earlier. Due to the large amount of his soul that has been removed, Orochimaru is now able to see the demon of the seal. Just in time to witness the consumption of the Hokage's soul affected by it. Once eaten by the demon, the souls are trapped in its belly, forever to spend eternity in a constant battle of hate with one another. This revelation brings fear to Orochimaru's eyes, who tries to ensure the third dies before he can be given that same future. As the Hokage battle goes on, the Jonin in the audience that managed to repel out Kabuto's Genjutsu begin to confront the invading ninja, determined to protect the audience from stray attacks. Meanwhile, Baki informs Kankuro and Tamari to take Gara elsewhere, his injury making him useless for the planned invasion. Sasuke, confused about what's going on, falls the three wanting to finish his fight with Gara. Kakashi watches Sasuke go off, unable to leave his current duty protection. He does, however, notice that Sakura too has managed to shake the Genjutsu, and tells her to wake Naruto and Shikamaru so they can follow Sasuke. She does so, though she finds that Shikamaru was also unaffected by the Genjutsu, choosing to pretend that he had been so he could avoid being drawn into battle. To help in their pursuit of Sasuke, Kakashi summons Pakun to guide them, and the four set off. As the group leaves the stadium and enters the forest, Pakun senses that they're being followed by Nai and Oto Ninja. To act as a distraction by the others some time, Shikamaru stays behind to slow down the ninja. After altering his surroundings to give the impression that the group went in a different direction, Shikamaru lies in wait for the following invaders. Once they catch up and take notice of the apparent change in course, Shikamaru traps the group with the shadow imitation technique. Shikamaru notices, however, that he's only managed to catch eight of nine, indicating that one ninja had been following behind to protect the others. Running low on chakra, and therefore running at a time where he can restrain the ninja with, Shikamaru throws Shuriken at the group so he can find out the location of the ninth. The Shuriken are all stopped by the free ninja's needles, and Shikamaru tries to extend his shadow to the ninja's location, but he doesn't have enough shadows to work with. After keeping the eight at bay for a while longer, Shikamaru's chakra runs out, and he's forced to release the group. Freed, the group encourages the ninth ninja to be the one to kill their captive, and in response, a ninja appears behind Shikamaru. The ninja, however, catches everyone by surprise, as it's revealed to be Asuma Saratobi with the ninth ninja in tow. In a flash, Asuma takes out the other eight and tells Shikamaru to take a rest. Sasuke eventually manages to catch up with Gara, Konkuro, and Tamari. As Konkuro prepares to fight Sasuke in hopes of giving Tamari and Gara time to escape, Shino Alborama arrives to fight Konkuro in Sasuke's stead, wanting to have the fight he'd been denied during the finals. As Sasuke goes off to continue his pursuit of Gara, Konkuro unveils his puppet, Karasu, and Shino readies his bugs for battle. Konkuro uses Karasu's new arsenal of weapons to try and poison Shino, though Shino's bugs allow him to make a number of otherwise impossible evasions. As Konkuro continues to direct Karasu, Shino is able to navigate his bugs in secret to Konkuro's location, which consume his chakra and prevent him from moving. With Konkuro no longer able to move, Shino collapses, Karasu's one successful strike finally taking effect. As Konkuro and Shino's fight draws to a close, Sasuke again manages to catch up with Gara, who having sensed Sasuke's arrival, swipes Tamari out of the way. As Gara's contemplations of killing Sasuke increase, his transformation begins with his sand forming new monster's arm. With the arm, Gara is given increased speed and strength, forcing Sasuke to begin his assault with another Chidori, a technique he's only capable of using twice a day. As Gara charges at Sasuke, Sasuke unleashes his jutsu, slicing Gara's arm in two. Though the technique is successful in injuring Gara, it does nothing but increase his desire to fight, causing him to sprout a tail of the same nature as the arm. As Gara charges again, his speed once again increased, Sasuke is forced to use Chidori a third time, pushing him to his limits and forcing him to activate the cursed seal given to him by Orochimaru. Though Sasuke's attack once again slices Gara's arm in two, Sasuke's use of the cursed mark drains the remaining energy causes him to collapse. As Gara makes the finishing blow, Naruto arrives and kicks Gara away. As Sakura and Pakun start to tend to Sasuke, Naruto attempts to figure out who Gara is, his face now partially transformed as well. Upon learning that the beast is Gara and remembering Gara's vow to kill to prove its existence, Naruto yells at the others to run away. Gara, however, has already made his move and charges at the downed Sasuke. Sakura, her willingness to help others strengthen during the tuning exams, shields Sasuke and prepares to attack Gara if necessary. Due to the look in Sakura's eyes, Gara is unable to bring himself to harm her, instead using his arm to pin her to a nearby tree. To save Sakura, Naruto charges at Gara, although only manages to get himself spotted aside. To help him in his battle, Naruto attempts to summon Gamabunta, although is only able to summon Gamakichi, a considerably smaller toad that does nothing but taunt Naruto. Unimpressed by Naruto's attempt at a summon, Gara gives the battle a stipulation. Using his sand to keep Sakura pinned to the tree, Gara causes the sand to slowly form a tighter hold on her, forcing Naruto to defeat him before Sakura suffocates. With the new incentive for battle made, Gara hurls sand shuriken at Naruto, who grabs Gamakichi to shield him from the attack. This onslaught allows Gara to find another chance to further his transformation
all the stops for the battle. After creating a number of shadow clones, Naruto uses the clones to launch himself at Gara. Though Gara swats him aside once again, Naruto manages to plant an explosive kunai under Gara's tail, something that just so happens to be Gara's weak spot. Before Naruto can collide with the surrounding trees, Sasuke catches him, tells him to save Sakura, and run. Naruto, remembering the time that Sasuke risked his life to save him, says that he'll be the one to fight Gara, since the two are much alike. Repeating his promise to protect those precious to him, Naruto taps into the demon fox's chakra, enabling him to create 1,999 shadow clones. With his army of shadow clones, Naruto uses Uzumaki Naruto 2000 combo, sending wave after wave of attacks at Gara and pushing Gara to his limits of endurable damage. Not wanting to lose, Gara completes his transformation, destroying all of Naruto's shadow clones and transforming into a tanuki that stands many times higher than the tallest tree. Determined to make Naruto pay for forcing him into his final form, Gara begins to encase Naruto in his sand binding coffin. Before the compacting effects of the sand can begin, Naruto again taps into the power of the demon fox, and again attempts the summoning technique. Finally successful, Gara's coffin expands and bursts, with Naruto riding upon Gamabuta's head ready for battle. Gamabuta, having yet to find Naruto worthy of commanding him, is reluctant to help fight for Naruto. Gamakichi, revealed to be Gamabuta's son, encourages the giant toad to accept Naruto due to Naruto's earlier protection of him from Gara. Upon learning that Naruto helped his son and that Gara had picked on a member of the Gama family, Gamabuta decides to help Naruto and unsheathes his equally giant sword. Judging at Gara, Gamabuta puts all of his might into his sword swing, though he's barely successful at cutting Gara's arm off. Impressed with Naruto's display of abilities, Gara emerges from the sand tanuki's forehead and puts himself to sleep, awakening the personality of the one-tailed Shukaku sealed within Gara. Now freed from the restraints imposed upon it by Gara's consciousness, Shukaku is able to use its more devastating abilities, each of which Gamabuta is unable to counter completely. Because toads lack natural weapons such as fangs or claws, Gamabuta asks Naruto to help him transform into something more capable of close combat. Choosing the first animal that comes to mind, Naruto transforms Gamabuta into a giant fox, allowing the latter to bite and tear at Shukaku. With Gamabuta locked in combat with Shukaku, Naruto Naruto leaves from Gambuta's head to that of Shukaku, punching Gara and waking him up, forcing Shukaku back into submission. With Gara awake again, his first priority becomes protecting himself from Naruto. As Gara's sand tries again to encase Naruto, a now untransformed Gambuta uses his tongue to shield Naruto. Naruto, determined to now defeat Gara and save Sakura, who's running out of time, taps into the Demon Fox's powerful more attack. With Chakra radiating from him, Naruto breaks free of Gara's shackles and charges at Gara, who manages to use his sand to restrain Naruto's hands and legs. Using the only weapon he has left, Naruto puts all of his energy into a headbutt. Naruto's last desperate attack being right on the mark, Gara's strength is sapped and the giant tanuki disintegrates. Gamabuta, worn out by battle, returns home with Gamakichi, though not before complimenting Naruto's outstanding fighting abilities. As the two Genin fall through the air, each manages to land on neighboring treetops and each prepares for what will be their last exchange of blows. Once each is ready, the two leap at one another, their destiny is about to be decided. Back at the stadium, the Journey of Konoha observed the feel of victory, the bodies of Oto and Suna Ninja strewn across the arena. The battle between the 3rd Hokage and Orochimaru has over the past hour not changed, as each is still locked in place. The Kusanagi in the 3rd's back and the soul partially removed from Orochimaru's body. The 3rd, wise as he is, has used his time to come to the conclusion that he no longer has the strength needed to completely remove Orochimaru's soul, and decides to instead make this Orochimaru's last battle. Having the demon of the seal turn its attention to Orochimaru's arms, the 3rd prepares to complete the only seal he can now make. Hoping to break the 3rd's will to go on, Orochimaru reminds his former master of the casualties Konoha has suffered at the hands of his invasion, saying that Konoha will crumble. Disheartened that Orochimaru would so quickly forget the abilities of Konoha's ninja, the 3rd reminds the former student of the Konoha ninja's desire to protect their village. All throughout the village, battles between Konoha's elite and the invading forces rage on, and despite the overwhelming forces united against them, the fighting few of the village utterly defeat the enemy. Determined to prove his point and finally prove to Orochimaru that power does not lie within the knowledge of techniques, the third seals Orochimaru's arms, taking away his ability forevermore of using jutsu. As Orochimaru's arms fall useless to his sides, the third bids his final farewells in unison with Naruto's defeat of Gara. Naruto and Gara fall to the earth, and the third Hokage falls over dead with a grin on his face. Enraged that, even in death, the old man could manage to smile, Orochimaru calls for assistance, and Enma, now free, honors his old friend by removing the blade from his back before disappearing. As Orochimaru's subordinates gather their leader and flee, the Jonin in the stadium confront the only two remaining invaders. With Kakashi's encouragement, Kabuto removes his Anbu disguise and whispers to Baki that they should retreat. As the two disappear, other battles conclude. Tamari picks up a defeated Konkuro, Sakura is free from Gara's sand, and Naruto approaches a defeated Gara. Fearing that Naruto means to do more harm, Gara beckons him to stay away. Upon getting close enough, instead of harming Gara, Naruto displays pity, stating that he too knows the pain of being alone. Naruto, however, was able to find people to nurture his pain and bring him hope, and states that if Gara ever tries to hurt these people who have brought him happiness, he will again be forced to take action. Gara, in disbelief, realizes that Naruto's strength comes not from his desire to help himself, but to help those who are dear to him, which begins to change Gara's outlook on life. Sasuke gathers up Naruto, extremely impressed and jealous of Naruto's display of strength. Likewise, Tamari and Konkuro retrieve a beaten Gara, who for the first time ever apologizes to them. As the last of the invading Oto and Tsunanin flee the village, the elite of Konoha gather upon the resting spot of their Hokage's body. During the Hokage's funeral a few days later, the ninja of Konoha vowed to remember his sacrifice forever. Search for Tsunade. After their failed invasion of Konoha Kakure, the ninja of Tsunagakure look for their now missing fourth Kazakage. After finding the Kazakage's body and the body of his assistants in the neighboring desert, the people of Tsuna realize that Orochimaru, the man who originally proposed the invasion of the village, killed and impersonated the Kazakage to give the impression of support for the invasion. This revelation, coupled with Tsuna's devastating losses at the hands of Konoha Ninja, forces the village to surrender unconditionally, which Konoha accepts. Konoha Kakure, through having managed to repel the invading forces, was also heavily affected by the invasion as well, losing many of its ninja forces and its third Hokage. Because the village is now without a leader, the village elders approach Jiraiya, one of the third Hokage's former pupils, and ask him to become the fifth Hokage. Jiraiya declines the offer, saying that another one of the third's pupils would be better suited for the job, Tsunade. Because Tsunade's whereabouts are unknown, Jiraiya offers to help go find her with the stipulation that he'd be allowed to bring Naruto as Maki. The elders ag
Meanwhile, two outsiders have entered the village and caught the attentions of Asuma Saratobi and Kurana Yuhi. Once confronted about their presence in Konoha, the two reveal themselves to be Kisame Hoshigaki, a renegade ninja from Kirigakure, and Itachi Uchiha, the men who single-handedly murdered the entire Uchiha clan. Because the two are wanted criminals, Asuma and Kuranai try to apprehend them through battle, but quickly found themselves outclassed by their enemies. Just as the two Konoha ninja are about to be defeated, Kakashi Harake arrives to save them both. His Sharingan making it easier for him to battle Kisame, so Itachi asks Kisame to step down to let him personally take on Kakashi. Despite Kakashi's own formidable abilities and advanced proficiency with the Sharingan, Itachi quickly proves to be the superior ninja, displaying his far greater speed and superior Sharingan abilities, and Kakashi is only barely able to block his Attacks. Realizing that Itachi is only using a fraction of his abilities, although he still praises Kakashi for being so skilled with the Sharingan despite not being of Ichiha blood, the moment Itachi activates the Monkakyo Sharingan, Kakashi immediately instructs Asuma and Kurenai to close their eyes so as to avoid falling prey to Itachi's ultimate technique. Because Kakashi has a Sharingan, he believes he will be able to withstand Itachi's jutsu, only to be swiftly proven wrong as Itachi's Tsukiyomi quickly overpowers Kakashi's Sharingan and renders him helpless. With the little strength he has, Kakashi asks why the two have come to Konoha, which Itachi replies that they're after the fourth Hokage's legacy, Naruto Uzumaki. Remembering what Jiraiya told him earlier, Kakashi recognized their reason as their organization, Akatsuki's goal to gain the power of the Nine-Tailed Demon Fox sealed with the Naruto. Because of Kakashi's knowledge of their organization and its motives, Itachi instructs Kisame to kill Kakashi, Asuma, and Kuranai. Before Kisame can land a fatal blow, however, Might Guy appears and repels Kisame. With Guy's arrival, Kakashi collapses, exhausted from Itachi's previous attack. Itachi, recognizing Guy as a threat as well as the fact that reinforcements are on their way, leaves with Kisame, wanting to avoid starting a war. Taking Kakashi away to rest, Guy, Asuma, and Kuranai decide that it'd be best if Sasuke Uchiha, Itachi's brother, didn't know that Itachi had returned. When Sasuke arrives to find out what had put Kakashi in the state he's in, the truth of Itachi's return in a search for Naruto slips out when Aoba accidentally spills the truth. Sasuke, having an everlasting desire to kill his brother due to the latter's murder of their entire family and also wanting to protect Naruto, runs off in search of Naruto. Meanwhile, Jiraiya and Naruto arrive at a nearby town's hotel with a rest for the night. Jiraiya, being a pervert through and through, notices an attractive woman that's showing interest in him. So that he can get acquainted with the woman, Jiraiya sends Naruto up to their room. As Naruto sits on his bed cursing Jiraiya, someone knocks at the door. Thinking it's an already rejected Jiraiya, Naruto opens the door, finding instead Kisame and Itachi. Perplexed by Itachi's Sharingan and the two's knowledge of the demon fox within him, Naruto leaves the safety of the room to find out what's going on. As Kisame readies his sword to cut off Naruto's leg, thereby making him easier to carry, Sasuke arrives, vowing to kill Itachi. To act on his promise, Sasuke prepares his Chidori and lunges at Itachi. Before Sasuke can land a blow, Itachi grabs and crushes his arm, sending the attack into a nearby wall. To help Sasuke, Naruto taps into the Demon Fox's chakra, ready to summon a toad to help in battle. Kisame's sword, however, absorbs Naruto's chakra, preventing him from using any jutsu. As Kisame again prepares to cut off Naruto's leg, a toad appears to block the attack, with Jiraiya appearing behind Naruto. Scolding Itachi and Kisame for not doing proper research on him, Jiraiya explains that he's much better at getting women than they are getting him, though Naruto dismisses that that's a bad excuse for his pervertedness. Realizing that Itachi put the girl under again jutsu to draw him away, Jiraiya learns for certain that the two really are after Naruto. As Jiraiya proclaims that he'll kill the two, Sasuke rises, repeating that he'll be the one to kill Itachi. Having no interest in their brotherly quarrel, Itachi kicks Sasuke aside and proceeds to beat him into submission. Once Sasuke is unable to fight back, astounded by how much he's still at class by his older brother, Itachi uses Tsukiyomi to show Sasuke the murder of their parents while also mocking him for lacking the hate needed to be strong enough. As Naruto makes to help Sasuke and Kisame makes to stop Naruto, Jiraiya encases the area in a layer of a sticky substance, preventing anyone from moving. Knowing that they cannot win, Itachi and Kisame flee, though not before Jiraiya attempts to further ensnare them with his jutsu. Surprised that they are successful in escaping, Jiraiya finds that a black flame was used to destroy his normally impenetrable technique. With Itachi and Kisame gone, Naruto checks up on Sasuke, whose mind has been broken by his own brother. At that moment, Guy arrives and kicks Jiraiya in the face, having mistaken him for an enemy. After Guy apologizes, he informs Jiraiya that Kakashi is in the same state as Sasuke, and that nothing can be done to help him recover. As Guy takes Sasuke back to Konoha to rest, Jiraiya realizes that only Tsunade can help Kakashi and Sasuke, strengthening his resolve to find her. Because Akatsuki will henceforth be after Naruto, Jiraiya decides to start teaching Naruto the technique that is supposedly stronger than Sasuke's Chidori, the Rasengan, the jutsu that took the fourth Hokage three years to master. As the pair goes from place to place in search of Tsunade, Naruto rapidly progresses through the Rasengan's learning steps, coming up with a number of shortcuts along the way. Just as Naruto gets to the final stages of learning the jutsu, Jiraiya learns of Tsunade's location, and the two go out to meet her. Meanwhile, Orochimaru is suffering from his last encounter with the third Hokage, his arms unable to perform jutsu and constantly bringing him pain at the same time. Knowing that his assistant, Kabuto Yakushi's medicine, will do nothing to help him, Orochimaru concludes that the only person who can restore his arms is Tsunade. Knowing where Tsunade is currently located, he and Kabuto go to find her. Elsewhere, Tsunade, an avid and very unlucky gambler, hits a winning streak, indicating to her that something bad is about to happen, and as such, she tries to flee the city. Her assistant, Shizune, asks Tsunade if they can go and see the local landmarks first, which Tsunade reluctantly agrees. As Shizune admires an ancient castle, with Tsunade repeatedly asking her to hurry up, the castle collapses, and from the rubble emerges Orochimaru and Kabuto riding a giant snake. Unhappy to see her old teammate, Tsunade refuses to heal Orochimaru, deducing what his ailment is from his appearance alone. After Kabuto states that only Tsunade can help Orochimaru, Tsunade inquires how he got the injury, recognizing it as being far above an average wound. Nonchalantly, Orochimaru explains that it was nothing more than his own carelessness when he was killing the third Hokage, the revelation of which shocks Shizune and Tsunade. Noting the expressions on the two's faces, Orochimaru comments that all people die and reminds Tsunade of her two deceased loved ones. This observation enrages Shizune, who attempts to strike 
Psycho Orochimaru, though Kabuto blocks the attack. After calming Shizune down and casually scolding Orochimaru for what he said, Tsunade punches the wall next to it, reducing it to gravel, and vows to kill him if he ever says it again. After repeating her refusal to help Orochimaru, Tsunade prepares to fight them in the event that they won't leave. Just as she's about to attack, Orochimaru offers to revive her dead brother and lover if she helps him, stopping Tsunade before she can act. Finally, considering the offer, Tsunade asks what Orochimaru will do if his arms are healed, to which he replies he will destroy Konoha. Elsewhere, Jiraiya and Naruto have arrived in the city, and the two visit Tsunade's last known location. When they hear reports of a giant snake destroying a castle, Jiraiya recognizes this is one of Orochimaru's acts, and as such rushes to the castle. Shizune, meanwhile, is infuriated by Orochimaru's proposal of destroying Konoha, and tries to persuade Tsunade in helping her kill the weakened Orochimaru. Although Tsunade refuses, Orochimaru sheds some of his own blood to make sure she keeps her word, knowing Tsunade suffers from a fear of blood. With Tsunade forced into submission by the sight of blood, Orochimaru gives her a week to consider his offer, and he and Kabuto disappear. When Jiraiya and Naruto arrive at the scene, Tsunade and Shizune have already left. Deciding to give up on the search for the day, Jiraiya takes Naruto to a local bar for dinner, where he surprisingly finds Tsunade and Shizune already having theirs. As Naruto eats his dinner, Jiraiya asks Tsunade what Orochimaru wanted from her, to which she replies nothing, quickly changing the subject to what Jiraiya wants from her. As he tells her that Konoha needs her to be the next Hokage, Naruto begins to choke on his food with surprise, and Tsunade and Shizune use as a confirmation that Orochimaru really had killed the third Hokage. Tsunade declines the position, saying that only a fool would become Hokage, and goes on to ridicule the past Hokages. Tsunade's words anger Naruto, spurring him into attempting to strike her, though Jiraiya holds him back. Impressed that Naruto was willing to challenge her, Tsunade offers to fight him, going so far as to say she'll only use one finger. After the two step outside, Naruto charges at Tsunade with a kunai in hand, though Tsunade is able to take it from him, use it to remove his forehead protector, and launch him backwards with the promised single finger. Tsunade, expecting Naruto to pass out from her attack, asks why being Hokage is such a sensitive subject for Naruto, to which he replies that becoming Hokage is his dream. As he says so, Tsunade sees in Naruto her dead brother and lover, both of whom would want to be Hokage, and both of whom would look similar to Naruto. While Tsunade is momentarily off balance, Naruto uses the opportunity to use his still to be mastered Rusengan on Tsunade. Recognizing the technique and the danger it imposes, Tsunade slams her finger into the ground, creating a large fissure that Naruto falls into, forcing the Rasengan into the ground. Noticing that Naruto's version of the Jutsu is dramatically weaker than what it was capable of doing, Tsunade proposes a bet with Naruto. If he can amass the Rasengan in a week, she'll give him her grandfather, the first Okage's necklace, something she claims that could buy three mountains. If he can't, she gets all the money in his wallet. Naruto accepts the offer and goes off to the hotel with Shizune while Tsunade and Jiraiya chat over drinks. During the discussion, Jiraiya reveals that he's aware that Tsunade has some sort of deal with Orochimaru, though he doesn't know what it is. He goes on to say, however, that if Tsunade helps Orochimaru with whatever it is that he wants, he will kill her as a traitor of Konoha. Looking to change the subject, Tsunade asks why Jiraiya brought Naruto with him, to which he replies that Naruto looks remarkably similar to Tsunade's dead brother, Nawaki. Meanwhile, at the hotel, Shizune explains Naruto the history of Tsunade's necklace, and how Tsunade had given it to each her brother and her lover, Dan, in turn in the hopes that it would help them achieve their goals of becoming Hokage. Soon after receiving the necklace, however, each of them died a bloody death, giving Tsunade a fear of blood and leading many to believe that the necklace was cursed. After hearing the story, Naruto leaves to finish his training, determined to prove that when he wins the necklace, he really will become a Hokage. For the next week, Naruto trains, and each day he puts large and larger dents into the trees he's training with, indicating that Rasengan is getting more powerful. All the while, Tsunade watches him in the background, remembering her dead loved ones and contemplating the offer Orochimaru gave her. On the final day, Naruto doesn't return home at his usual time, and Shizune goes to see what happened to him. After finding the tree to be broken and Naruto passed out on the ground, Shizune takes him home to rest. At the same time, Jiraiya and Tsunade meet again for drinks and discuss Naruto's progress. While Jiraiya is not looking, Tsunade subs a powder into his drink, and after drinking it, he passes out. Tsunade returns to the hotel to see if Naruto has perfected the jutsu and only finds him in bed, causing him to realize what a ridiculous bet it was that she had made. Shizune, meanwhile, pleads for Tsunade not to go through with Orochimaru's deal, willing to kill herself in order to stop her. Tsunade knocks Shizune unconscious and leaves to meet Orochimaru. As Orochimaru and Kabuto head towards the meeting place, Orochimaru comments that it may be easy to persuade Tsunade to heal his arms if Shizune weren't around, and so Kabuto heads off to kill her. Naruto, meanwhile, wakes Shizune up having found her on the floor. Realizing what happened, Shizune rushes to the window to go after Tsunade, but a weakened Jiraiya stops her before she can leave. Cursing Tsunade for drugging his drink, Jiraiya explains that the drug makes it difficult for him to move and that he can't control Chakra very well. Kabuto watches the conversation in the background, and knowing that he can't take on Shizune, Jiraiya, and to his surprise, Naruto by himself, leaves to report to Orochimaru. Jiraiya notices is Kabuto's departure and asks what deal Tsunade made with Orochimaru. Along the way to the meeting spot, Shizune explains the offer, and Jiraiya realizes that he may need to kill Tsunade. Tsunade and Orochimaru, meanwhile, meet at the site of their last conversation, and Tsunade agrees to heal Orochimaru's arms if he promises to leave Konoha alone. Orochimaru agrees to the stipulation, and Tsunade approaches him, preparing her healing jutsu. Before she can make contact with Orochimaru, Kabuto appears and throws a kunai between them, forcing the two to separate. Orochimaru, realizing what Kabuto has done, asks why after coming so far, Tsunade was betraying him. Kabuto notes that because both he and Tsunade are medic nin, he could notice the subtle amounts of killing intent within her jutsu. Orochimaru laments Tsunade's decision, even saying that he really had intended to stay away from Konoha. Tsunade dismisses this as a lie, yet says she's been willing to believe it if it meant she could see her loved ones again. Because of Naruto, however, the dreams of Nawaki and Dan returned to her, and thus she couldn't bring herself to turn a blind eye to Orochimaru's goals of effectively destroying the hopes that they had had. With that, Tsunade attempts to attack Orochimaru, though because of his timely dodge, her attack misses, creating a large crater where he had been. As Orochimaru prepares to fight Tsunade, he comments that he never battled her before, although Kabuto quickly questions this observation since he would actually be the one who will fight her. 
As Kabuto informs Orochimaru of Jiraiya's presence, they lead Tsunade away, not wanting to fight in the city in case Jiraiya shows up. After retreating to an empty field, Kabuto and Tsunade begin their fight. Because Kabuto isn't very good at taijutsu, Tsunade's specialty, he resorts to using his mystical palm technique to give his attacks an extra boost in strength. Although Tsunade is initially able to avoid many of his attacks, her old age causes her to tire quickly, allowing Kabuto to catch her off guard and strike. Because of the nature of his mystical palm technique, Kabuto is able to sever some of Tsunade's muscles upon contact, preventing her from moving. Using this to his advantage, Kabuto punches her in the chest, which also allows him to sever some of her respiratory muscles, making it difficult for her to breathe. Thinking this should be enough to force Tsunade into submission, Kabuto begins to gloat at its success. Tsunade, her large breasts having weakened Kabuto's attack, uses his cockiness to her advantage by striking him in the neck, forcing him to the ground. As he attempts to get up, Kabuto discovers that Tsunade's attack disrupted the electric currents of his nervous system, causing his hand to move when he tries to stand up. With Kabuto unable to move, Tsunade heals her injuries. As she does so, Kabuto begins to compensate for Tsunade's last attack, learning what actions lead to what outcomes. After regaining the ability to move 80% of his body, Kabuto gets up, surprising Tsunade due to his rapid ability to adapt. Just as Kabuto is about to attack a steel healing Tsunade, Naruto, Jiraiya, and Shizune appear before him, blocking the way. Tsunade is unappreciative of the group's arrival and pushes pushes Jiraiya to the ground so she can charge at Kabuto. Before she can commence an attack on Kabuto, however, Kabuto slits his wrists, covering Tsunade with blood and causing her to become paralyzed with fear. With Tsunade incapacitated, Kabuto punches her away, leaving Shizune to catch Tsunade and take her aside to recover. Naruto, meanwhile, tries to understand why Kabuto, a person he had befriended during the Chunin exams and had believed to be a ninja of Konoha, is fighting against Tsunade with an Otogakure forehead protector on. To help Naruto out, Kabuto explains he was a spy for Orochimaru who entered the Chunin exams to gather information on Sasuke Uchiha, a person he claims is far more talented than Naruto. Enraged by Kabuto's treachery, Naruto creates a number of shadow clones to help him attack Kabuto from the side of his injured hand. As Naruto closes in, however, Kabuto uses the blood seeping from his wrist to blind the Narutos, allowing him to easily defeat them all. Shizune, using Kabuto's distraction to her advantage, launches a poisonous needle at Kabuto, although Kabuto is able to block it in time by having the needle deflect off his forehead protector. Returning to Orochimaru's side, Kabuto takes a pill to stop his bleeding. As he does so, Jiraiya hands out assignments. He will fight Orochimaru, Shizune will fight Kabuto, Naruto will protect Tsunade while she recovers. With that, Jiraiya and Kabuto, with Orochimaru's assistance, perform the summoning technique, allowing Kabuto to summon two giant snakes, while Jiraiya, still in his drugged condition, can only manage to summon Gamakichi. As Orochimaru ridicules Jiraiya for failing to summon anything formidable, his attention is brought to Naruto, who is giving his own attempt at a summon. Just as Orochimaru considers whether he should have killed Naruto when they first met due to how formidable the power of the demon fox could be, Naruto summons Gamatatsu, causing Orochimaru's worries to vanish. Orochimaru and Kabuto charge their respective opponents, each riding upon a different snake. Jiraiya uses his swamp of the underworld on Orochimaru, though in his drug state he is only able to submerge the snake in a shallow swamp. No longer able to use the snake, Orochimaru charges at Jiraiya, lengthening his neck so we can get close enough to bite the others. In response, Jiraiya creates a defense by extending the hair in his head and turning it into spikes, creating a stalemate between the two. Shizune, meanwhile, battles with Kabuto, but Kabuto is able to evade her attacks and burrow beneath her, allowing him to sever the muscles in her ankles and causing her to collapse. At the same time, Naruto deals with Kabuto's snakes, escaping from its mouth only briefly enough for it to fall upon his leg, pinning him in place. As Tsunade regains her senses, she finds Shizune and Naruto lying on the ground, defeated. Remembering the deaths of Nawaki and Dan, she attempts to defend herself against the approaching Kabuto, though he easily starts to beat her into submission. Just as he's about to give her a finishing blow, Naruto appears in front of Tsunade, blocking Kabuto's punch with his forehead protector. Surprised by Naruto's sudden intervention, Kabuto was left momentarily stunned. Using this to his advantage, Naruto tries to use the Rasengan on Kabuto, but because of the slow sweeping motion that Naruto puts into the attack, Kabuto is easily able to avoid it. As Naruto lays on the ground due to his lack of speed, Kabuto taunts him by detailing how talentless he is and how hopeless his dreams are. As he does so, Tsunade sees these insults as applying to Nawaki and Dan, and remembers her earlier words of a similar meaning to Naruto. As Naruto rebuts these claims, he reminds Tsunade of the bet they had and how she will need to give him her necklace, and then proceeds to create a shadow clone. As Kabuto charges towards Naruto with a kunai in tow, Tsunade begs Naruto to run so he can accomplish his dreams, but Naruto simply stands his ground. In doing so, Naruto allows Kabuto to attack him, although he blocks the worst of it by catching the kunai with his hand. As Naruto grabs a hold of Kabuto's hand, he begins to create a Rasengan with his free hand and uses a shadow clone for assistance in its creation. Once completed, Naruto forces the sphere into Kabuto's stomach, the latter unable to avoid it. With only enough time to clutch Naruto's chest, Kabuto is hurled back by the attack and into a rock. As the dust settles, Kabuto emerges with a deep wound in his gut, though it immediately begins to heal as a result of the chakra he gathered in his abdomen just before the attack. Although the exterior damage is almost completely healed, Kabuto collapses from the internal injuries caused by Naruto's attack. His chakra reserves too low to fully heal. Kabuto's last attempt at defeating Naruto, however, proves to be effective as Naruto passes out. As Tsunade rushes to his side to investigate, she finds that Kabuto weakened Naruto's heart muscles, giving him an erratic heartbeat. Tsunade desperately tries to heal him in an attempt to not only save Naruto, but also in an attempt to save Nawaki and Dan's dream. As she does so, the demon fox within Naruto notices the fading life force of its host and contributes its power in an attempt to save Naruto and in turn itself. As Tsunade continues her healing effort, a tired Naruto comes to and grabs her necklace, claiming it is his. After he slips into a tired sleep, Tsunade puts her necklace around his neck, hoping just once more that its wearer will someday become Hokage. Orochimaru, having just witnessed Naruto's potential, worries about what may happen if Naruto ever falls into the hands of the Akatsuki and decides to kill Naruto in his weakened state. After throwing Jiraiya to the ground, Orochimaru lunges at Naruto with his Kusanagi sword sticking out of his mouth. Tsunade, realizing Orochimaru's intended target, 
leaps in front of Naruto as a human shield, allowing the sword to impale her through the heart. As Orochimaru tells Tsunade that he had intended to kill her, Tsunade replies that she won't let anything happen to Naruto. As Orochimaru removes his sword from the blood-trembling Tsunade, he questions why she would save Naruto, to which she replies that she's protecting Konoha but protecting Naruto, the future Hokage. As Orochimaru ridicules the title for its holder's willingness to sacrifice their lives for the prosperity of Konoha, Tsunade states that she too will sacrifice her life for the same reason. Disappointed that Tsunade would waste her life in such a way, Orochimaru slashes her across the chest and she falls to the ground. Believing Tsunade to be at the very least out of the fight, Orochimaru makes for a finishing blow on Naruto, though Tsunade blocks the attack again. Upon falling to the ground in fatigue, Tsunade's trembling stops, her fear of blood finally overcome. As she rises, Tsunade throws Orochimaru back, explaining that her commitment to protecting Naruto is because she is henceforth the fifth Hokage. As her first order of business, Tsunade activates the seal on her forehead to completely regenerate the wounds induced by Orochimaru. Realizing that Tsunade is now back in top shape, Orochimaru retreats to Kabuto for assistance. In unison, Orochimaru, Tsunade, and Jirai use the summoning technique, summoning Manda, Katsuyu, and Gamabunta respectively. As Gamabunta expresses excitement in finally getting the chance to kill Manda, Manda reprimands Orochimaru for not having any human sacrifices ready for him. After Jiraiya and Tsunade denounce Orochimaru as their comrade and give him promises of death, the final battle begins. Katsuyu starts the fight by spitting some of her acid at Manda, the latter of which quickly evades the attack. Using Katsuyu's vulnerability between attacks to his advantage, Manda wraps himself around Katsuyu and prepares to bite the giant slug. Before he can do so, however, Gambuta forces his sword between Manda's jaws, saving Katsuyu from the snake bite. Still having Katsuyu in his clutches, Manda tightens the hold of her in an attempt to suffocate her, but she breaks apart into a number of smaller slugs in order to escape the attack. As she regenerates, Manda throws Gambuta around, allowing the toad to, with the help of Jiraiya, engulf Manda in an enormous cloud of fire. When smoke clears, Manda's shed skin is all that can be found, the real snake in the process of burrowing underneath Gambuta. Although Gambuta is able to catch Manda's tail, Manda is able to get behind the giant toad and prepares to bite the latter. Before he can do so, however, Tsunade appears the Gamabuta's sword and toe and forces it through Manda's mouth to keep it shut. Orochimaru, hoping to even the playing field, extends his tongue towards Tsunade in an attempt to break her neck, but Tsunade uses the tongue to her advantage by using it to bring Orochimaru to her. After connecting her fist with Orochimaru's jaw, Tsunade allows the defeated Orochimaru to crash to the ground. Manda, disgusted with Orochimaru for losing, promises that if he could open his mouth, he'd eat him and disappears after promising to do so next time they meet. As Manda departs, Orochimaru frees his tongue from Tsunade's grasp and returns to Kabuto's side, where he says there's still one way to get his arms back, the mask covering the face of the body he had stolen peeling away. With a promise to destroy Konoha, Orochimaru disappears with Kabuto. After returning to the city and Naruto's recovery, Jiraiya, Tsunade, Shizune, and Naruto have lunch at the same bar they met at only a week earlier. After learning that Tsunade had taken the title of 5th Hokage, Naruto begins to find her inadequate for the position, listing all the ways that the 3rd Hokage was better than her. Angered by his words, Tsunade tells Naruto to step outside so the two can fight, where Tsunade once again says she'll only need one finger. As Naruto charges at her, she once again removes his forehead protector and prepares to strike with one finger. Fearing the outcome of the strike, Naruto closes his eyes. To his surprise, however, Tsunade kisses his forehead rather than hitting him, telling him to become a good man. After Naruto agrees, the group heads back to Konoha. Upon their return, Naruto heard that the village of Konoha must continue their missions as normal. Iruka explained to Naruto over a bowl of ramen, of course, that they must not show other villages that they were currently weak. They must do as many missions as they had done before Orochimaru's invasion, even though their strength had been cut in half. Tsunade was well known as a great medical nin, so she healed Sasuke and Kakashi of their ailments received during the fight with Itachi. She visited Lee, who was badly injured from his fight with Gar in the Chunin exam preliminary round, after persistent nagging for many characters, and told him that he should give up on being a ninja. There were fragments of bone in his spine, and the one operation that could be done, and could only be done by her, had a 50% chance of either curing or killing him. Naruto and Konohamaru walking down the street when they overheard Shizune talking to Tsunade. They heard the fifth Okage state her concern and her motivation to help Lee. This convinced Konohamaru that Tsunade really was a good replacement for his grandfather. Just minutes before Tsunade was inaugurated as the fifth Okage in front of the villagers, Shizune stumbled upon an open book on Tsunade's desk. It showed a series of mathematical equations surrounded by a chart of a body. 50% was written and crossed out, followed by an arrow pointing to a circle which contained 58%, and Shizune could only smile. Sasuke Recovery Mission Naruto's influence on Sasuke, though profound, was powerless to prevent Sasuke from leaving his village and friends to receive training from Rochimaru. Sasuke's decision to leave was the result of a chain of events that rekindles hatred for his brother and his desire to avenge his clan. To do so, he must claim a great amount of power, which became the center of his entire life. Humiliated by Itachi's declaration that he was disappointingly weak and aware of the fact that Naruto might be superior, Sasuke challenged Naruto to a fight after Naruto returned to Konoha. They engaged in a heated duel on the rooftop of the hospital where Naruto told Sasuke that he had never considered himself inferior to Sasuke. Kakashi leapt in to stop the fight when Naruto and Sasuke were about to use their Rasengan and Chidori on each other, reflecting both their attacks into adjacent water towers. While Sasuke Chidori made a larger dent in the front of the water tower than Naruto's Rasengan, Sasuke was shocked to find that the back of Naruto's water tank had been completely blown up with the power of his Rasengan. Sasuke realized that he might have lost the fight and received major injuries if Kakashi hadn't stopped the fight. This only made Sasuke even angry that Naruto was getting stronger with the day and could actually be able to defeat him in battle. Ever since the Chunin exams and the fight against Gar of the Sand Waterfall, Sasuke had felt that Naruto had been improving immensely. Naruto only wanted recognition from Sasuke, recognition that he'd really got stronger. However, Sasuke would never recognize Naruto because by doing so, he would also have to admit that he was weaker than him. Despite a lecture from Kakashi about the pointlessness of revenge, the appearance of Orochimaru's Sound 4 with an offer of greater powers and yet another humiliating pummeling tipped Sasuke over the edge. Sasuke went to leave the village that night, but was distracted by Sakura, who then tried to convince him not to leave Konoha. During this conversation, a crying and desperate Sakura confessed her love to Sasuke and begged him not to leave the village, but he rejected her. Once she realized that he was going to leave either way, she offered to go with him to enact his revenge, which he refused. 
After a long resort, Sasuke threatened to scream and alert the village guards if Sasuke left. And finally, having hit a nerve, Sasuke moved from several feet in front of Sakura to directly behind her in a flash of speed. He sincerely thanks her for everything she had done for him thus far before knocking her unconscious and laying her on a nearby bench, then leaving the village. A five man squad was gathered by Shigamaru, including himself, Kiba, Naruto, Choji, and Neji. Naruto also recommends Shino, however, Shino was on a special mission with his father at the time. Sakura arrives just before they're leaving and explains while crying that she failed to stop Sasuke, and asks Naruto, who she believes to be the only one capable of doing so, to do it as a once in a lifetime request. Naruto makes a lifetime promise to her to bring Sasuke back to the village. They easily caught up to the Sound 4, who were escorting Sasuke to Orochimaru. Strategies were not used, rather the team split up. The same happening on the part of the Sound 4, they dropped people one by one, and Choji ended up fighting Jiroba by himself. Using two of these secret pills of the Akamichi clan, Choji was able to increase his chakra enough to keep from being defeated. In the end, he had to consume the red pepper pill, which increased his chakra a hundredfold but left him in an extremely critical condition, usually resulting in death. Taking the pin slimmed down his body as the excess calories were converted into butterfly wings of chakra. After getting his revenge on Jirobo for eating the last chip and calling him fat, Choji put all of his chakra and power into his fist and killed Jirobo for insulting his best friend, Shikamaru. Next, Neji ended up fighting Kitamaru. Kitamaru had trouble at short range since Neji's Byakugan and gentle fist were too powerful to penetrate. Kitamaru ended up fighting from long range, but the battle was locked in his stalemate until Kitamaru discovered a weakness of the Byakugan. It has a blind spot behind Neji's first thoracic vertebrae. Knowing that he would be hit in the area, Neji intentionally allowed Kitamaru to hit him with a powerful arrow, to which Kitamaru had affixed a chakra string to ensure accuracy. However, Neji used the chakra string to use his gentle fist to damage Kitamaru's internal organs. Neji then caught up with Kitamaru, used 8 trigrams to close Kitamaru's Tenketsu, chakra points, Kitamaru died shortly after. Neji was left in a critical state after the fight. Shikamaru was matched up with Tayuya, while Kiba and Akamaru with Sakon and Ukon. Kiba and Akamaru did an amazing tag team on Sakon, but Sakon split with Ukon right before Kiba and Akamaru could lay a devastating blow. Sakon and Ukon activated their cursed seals to level 2, which made them far too powerful Kiba and Akamaru to cope with. Meanwhile, Shikamaru, despite all his prowess performing strategies, simply couldn't kill Tayuya because of his sheer force. He managed to use a shadow imitation technique in her three summons, but she quickly dispelled the both. Then he caught her in a shadow imitation technique, then hit shadow neck binding technique, while at the same time Akamaru got injured and Kiba refusing to leave him. Without Akamaru to do the combination attacks, however, Kiba and Akamaru were forced to retreat. Kiba was forced to stab himself in order to escape, and Shikamaru, for the first time, couldn't come up with any ideas to defeat Toyuya, and was forced to keep his shadow neck binding technique on her. Finally, Shikamaru and Kiba were ready to accept their deaths. However, before the finishing strikes could be executed, the Saiyan Ninja arrived to help. Right before Shikamaru and Kibo were about to die, they were aided by Tamari and Konkuro, respectively, who had been ordered to help the Konoha Ninja. Konkuro's puppets were unaffected by Sakon and Ukon's ability to fuse with cells. When Sakon arrived, he attempted to do the same thing he had almost done with Kiba, but Konkuro turned out to be his new puppet, Kuroari, to injure Sakon, forcing him to fuse back, and Ukon to take over. Konkuro then trapped Sakon and Ukon inside his puppet Kuroari. Konkuro then used Karasu to stab them through holes in Kuroari, and used Karasu and Kuroari to do a devastating and deadly combo, Black Secret Technique Machine One Shot, thus killing the brothers. Meanwhile, since Toyuya used Sand to attack, Tamari's wind was a natural enemy. Tamari used her sickle weasel technique, which blew away Toyuya and cut her flute in half. Shikamaru used his time to tell Tamari about Toyuya's strategies. After a while, Toyuya fixed her flute and was ready to kill Shikamaru and Tamari. But Tamari used her summoning technique and used summoning quick beheading dance, and was able to kill Toyuya by destroying an entire tract of forest in which the sliced debris crushed the ladder. Last, Kimimaro, who was stronger than all the Sound 4 combined, came to aid the escort mission. At first, he was faced with Naruto, but even Naruto's massive amounts of shadow clones proved to be no match for Kimimaru, whose taijutsu skills were more than a match for Naruto's superior numbers. Naruto even used the nine tailed demon fox's chakra, but was still losing. Losing. During the fight, Sasuke emerged from the coffin, which caused Naruto to return to normal and begin wondering why Sasuke was with the Sound 4. Naruto began urging Sasuke to return home with him, stating how everyone was worried about Sasuke. Unfortunately, Sasuke, who had fallen deeper into darkness, responded by cackling madly before fleeing with Naruto, calling Sasuke's name. Kimimaro attempted to kill Naruto, but was stopped by Rock Lee, allowing Naruto to chase after Sasuke while Lee fought Kimimaro. Both Lee and Kimimaro were taijutsu experts, but since Lee had only recently recovered from his surgery, he was not in top shape. Lee drank some sake that he thought was medicine and became intoxicated, and began fighting with the drunken fist style. With this added unpredictability, Lee gained an upper hand against Kimimaro. However, he clearly had no idea what he was doing, who he was fighting, and why he felt so drunk. After a while, Kimimaro was forced to do his dance with the Camellia, but Rock Lee then appeared to be virtually invincible and laid a devastating blow to Kimimaro. Seeing that there was no chance of him defeating Lee in his present state, Kimimaro used his curse seal level 1 and overpowered Lee, manifesting his horrific ability to manipulate all his bones at will. Not only this, but Lee began to sober up. Lee would have been killed if Gara had not arrived in time and used his sand to protect him. For obvious reasons, Kimimaro was at a disadvantage since Gara was capable of blocking all physical attacks and Kimimaro could only use physical attacks. However, like the Sound 4, Kimimaro was able to get past Gara's defense and offense by sheer force. Kimimaro's bones were so tough they simply forced their way through Gara's sand. Even Sand Waterfall Funeral and other crushing forces couldn't bring him down, as he created a film of bone beneath his skin to protect himself. Kimimaro would have defeated and killed Gara with his last attack, but before Kimimaro could finish Gara, his terminal illness ended his life. Naruto caught up with Sasuke and began battling. Sasuke's cursed seal of heaven, which had been powered up by a pill given to him by the Sound 4, this is why he was in the coffin, gave Sasuke inhuman strength, which he used to reduce Naruto to almost ragdoll levels. Meanwhile, Sasuke recalled his experience with Itachi and his parents up to the point of the Uchiha clan downfall. It was in these moments that the Mangekyo Sharingan and how Itachi obtained it by killing his best friend Shisui Uchiha was revealed. It was also revealed that Itachi had encouraged Sasuke to gain the Mangekyo Sharingan, which he claimed to be the only way to exact revenge on Itachi by any means necessary. And this
Rasengan and Chidori respectively, causing each other to fly backwards. Activating his cursed seal, Sasuke uses his enhanced speed and strength to overcome Naruto and strike him with the Chidori. Naruto managed to block the attack, but Sasuke, still intent on killing Naruto, tried to strangle Naruto, only to have himself thrown aside by a Nine Tails powered opponent. With his enhanced abilities, Naruto was able to easily overwhelm Sasuke, all the while trying to reason with him, only to have Sasuke ultimately reject his efforts. Despite this, Sasuke finally admitted that they were fighting as equals. In this moment, Sasuke's Sharingan finally matured, enabling him to predict Naruto's movements and once again turn the tables. Upset by Naruto's persistence, Sasuke knocked him unconscious with Peregrine Falcon Drop. The Nine Tails, probably to save itself, gave Naruto even more of its chakra, creating for the first time Naruto's one-tailed transformation, complete with the Demon Fox Cloak that surrounds him. With one arm of the cloak, Naruto unleashed powerful short and long-range attacks, which Sasuke, even with the Sharingan, was unable to keep up with. Feeling he had no choice, Sasuke increased his Cursed Seal of Heaven to level 2, once again evening the playing field. Both Sasuke and Naruto realized the cost of their respective abilities at that point, but both decided they had no other choice. Sasuke revealed the location of their fight was the Valley of the End, and determining the end of battle, forced the use of the third Jidori. Naruto created using one hand, and the Demon Fox Cloak's Chakra as a shell, the Demon Fox Rasengan. Sasuke's Chidori, after a moment, warped into the Flapping Chidori. The two ninjas collided their attacks. Sasuke, planning to punch Naruto in the heart, deliberately missed and targeted the gut instead, while Naruto, referring to one of Sasuke's insults, scratched his forehead protector. A black dome of energy formed around them, which eventually dissipated, revealing the two ninjas as their current forms, and then as their younger selves, who held hands and smiled at each other. When the dust settled, Sasuke was revealed to be victorious. Sasuke pondered whether or not to kill an unconscious Naruto, but decided to leave in the end. Kakashi took Naruto back to Konoha. At the same time, Sasuke decided to gain the power to kill Itachi in his own way, through Orochimaru, as he walked off to Otogakure. It was then revealed that Akatsuki member Zetsu had been watching the fight the whole time. As Kakashi took Naruto back to Konoha, several medical men appeared to update him on the situation, and to take care of Naruto and Sasuke, which Kakashi deemed unnecessary for obvious reasons in both cases. Neji and Choji both underwent intensive medical treatment, both were successfully healed thanks to the Nara clan's medical tome, Tsunade's medical prowess, and Shizune and a team of medical nin. Kiba and Akamaru were also here to their moderate injuries under the care of Hana Inazuka, his elder sister. Shikamaru, with only his finger injured, decided to end his ninja career, as he put his team's life in danger, and the mission failed regardless. But Shikaku convinced him to persevere. Sasuke was shown walking with Orochimaru and Kabuto in one of Orochimaru's lairs. Shikamaru paid Naruto a visit in his room, while Sakura decided to visit Naruto and Sasuke only to be severely disappointed by Naruto's failure to bring Sasuke back, as she overheard Naruto and Shikamaru's conversation. Naruto, however, declared his intent to keep to the original promise, to which Sakura gratefully responded. After her visit to Naruto, Sakura, realizing how useless she had been in keeping Sasuke in Konoha, requested for Tsunade to take her on as her apprentice, to which Tsunade consented. Naruto's next visitor was Jiraiya, who revealed that Orochimaru had already taken a body before Sasuke arrived, so he had to wait another three years to take another body, and tried to convince Naruto to give up on Sasuke, based on his similar experience with Orochimaru. Naruto, however, refused to quit his efforts. Jiraiya, who figured it pointless to change Naruto's mind, decided to train Naruto for two and a half years, to prepare Naruto for the Akatsuki, which Naruto readily accepted. Akatsuki convenes and decides to hasten their plans. In the anime, Naruto was forced to remain in Konoha for a few months before setting out with Jiraiya. In the manga, he left as soon as he got out of the hospital. Sakura also asked to become Tsunade's apprentice at the time of Naruto's departure in the manga. Well, in the anime, it was after a mission with Naruto and Jiraiya that happened shortly after Sasuke's departure. Land of Rice Fields investigation mission. After recovering from his battle against Sasuke, Naruto joins Sakura in another attempt to save Sasuke from Orochimaru. Before crossing Konoha's border, Jiraiya appears. He saves them from becoming labeled missing then after leaving the village without authorization by allowing them to join him on a mission to gather information on Sasuke and Orochimaru. Their journey takes them to the land of Rice Fields, the land of the Otogakure. After a couple comedic failures to gather info due to Jiraiya's perverted antics, Naruto and Sakura meet a young Kunoichi named Sasame of the Fuma clan. She revealed her desire to find her cousin Arashi, who, along with the majority of their clan, went missing. After facing three members of the Fuma clan and managing to escape them, Jiraiya returned to the info that he gathered from the remnants of the Fuma clan that saw through Orochimaru's lies. Jiraiya explained that Orochimaru was gathering as many supporters as he could from various clans simply to gain access to this secret technique. After facing the three members again and defeating them, Sasame led Naruto and his team to Orochimaru's curtain hideout. Inside the base, with no knowledge of where to go, the team took different paths. Eventually, Naruto found Sakura in a long corridor facing off against Kabuto. Naruto was able to hit Kabuto with his Rasengan, but unfortunately fell prey to a devastating technique that attacked his heart. After being saved by Sakura and Sasame, it was discovered that Kabuto was actually another Fuma clan member, Kagoro, in disguise. Soon after, they found Arashi, who became the victim of an unstable technique of Orochimaru's that merged him with two fellow clan members and drove him insane. Naruto, along with Sasame and Sakura, were able to restore his mind. As Orochimaru's hideout began to fall apart, Arashi revealed that Sasuke was safe for now, but Orochimaru was doing everything in his power to make Sasuke a perfect host for him in the near future. After being sure that the Fuma clan were free from Orochimaru's control, Naruto and his team returned to Konoha. Mizuki tracking mission. Ready to begin his three-year training with Jiraiya, Naruto was furious to learn that Jiraiya was ordered by Tsunade to go gather information instead for a while. After Jiraiya managed to sneak away from Naruto, he decided to talk directly to Tsunade. Naruto, who was spying on Tsunade's Hokage meetings, discovered that Mizuki had not only escaped from prison, but had a connection to Orochimaru. Seeing this as another chance to find Sasuke, Naruto went off to look for Mizuki and met up with Iruka. Eventually, Naruto found Mizuki and was horrified at how much stronger Mizuki looked now. Iruka had Naruto fight against the legendary Stupid Brothers, while Iruka faced off against Mizuki. After being completely overpowered by the two brothers and Sanra's strength, Naruto was saved by Team 10, who took over the battle so Naruto could aid Iruka. Along the way, Naruto met Mizuki's former lover, Subaki. With her help, 
Naruto and Iruka found Mizuki's hideout, where it was discovered that Mizuki was given instructions for a special performance enhancing drug. Meanwhile, Team 10 is almost defeated since the two brothers do powerful, but Tsunade comes to their aid and convinces them that Mizuki tricked them and that they should head back to the prison. After consuming the drug, Mizuki became a behemoth of his former self and completely overpowered Naruto and Iruka. After discovering that Mizuki's speed was rapidly declining from pouring more chakra into his raw power, Naruto and Iruka were able to defeat Mizuki with a well-timed maneuver that ended with a Rasengan. After Mizuki was interrogated, it was discovered that he unfortunately had no knowledge of Orochimaru's whereabouts. Kurosuki Family Removal Mission With Jiraiya still gone and no idea of when he would return, Naruto decided to train any way he could in the village. While training in the woods, he came across three weak and injured men from the village of Katabami Gold Mine. Naruto brought them back to Konoha. After they recovered and explained to Tsunade that they came to Konoha for help in ridding the village of a terrible gang, Tsunade decided to assign Naruto on the mission with Team Guy to keep him preoccupied from his obsessions of finding either Sasuke or Jiraiya. Before leaving, Naruto learned from Lee, who was told by Guy, that the leader of the gang is Raigo Kurosuki, a former member of the Seven Ninja Swordsmen of the Mist. Naruto saw this as another chance to find Sasuke as Raiga might know where Kisame and Itachi are and might lead him to Sasuke. Before arriving at the village, the team stopped at a small restaurant that Lee knew well from his early days training with Guy. There they met an old acquaintance of Lee's, Sancho, an elderly lady whose best meal was an energizing and nutritious curry known as the Curry of Life. Sancho revealed that her son Karashi left the restaurant a while ago after getting a wrong understanding on being strong. The team then went to the village and were horrified to discover that not only were the villagers so traumatized by the gang they refused to be rescued, but also that Raiga had a psychotic joy for funerals and would regularly bury people alive. After defeating Raiga's minions and discovering one of them was Karashi, then Naruto and the others were confronted by Raiga. In addition to Raiga's highly powerful lightning jutsu, Naruto and his team found themselves at an even bigger disadvantage from a powerful genjutsu even Neji's Byakugan was powerless against. Soon it was discovered that Raiga's unique genjutsu and much of his power was actually coming from a young boy he was carrying on his back. The boy was named Ranmaru and possessed a unique dojutsu. After separating the two, Naruto was able to launch him off a cliff with a Rasengan and defeat him. Afterwards, Naruto and the team retrieved Ranmaru. They learned that the boy had been with Raiga for years by choice because the two of them had an understanding of each other. Raiga gave Ranmaru a reason to live and feel useful. This made Naruto remember Haku, who shared a similar relationship with Zabuza and ultimately refused to let Ramaru go back down the same path as Haku did and offered him another path. Later, while the team was helping Sancho make shelter for her shop against a storm, Ramaru had Karashi bring him to Raiga's burial. Ramaru was able to tell despite Raiga's fatal wounds from Naruto, Raiga was still barely alive. Ramaru, without hesitation, transferred almost all of his energy into Raiga to save him. Infuriated by the sight of a seemingly dead Ramaru, Raiga took his rage out on Naruto and his team. While no longer having Ramaru's eyes to aid him in battle, Raiga instead gathered natural energy from a lightning storm of power and enhanced his lightning release technique. After Ramaru was saved and recovered by Tenten, he began to understand what Naruto was talking about at night, trying to find value in life besides killing others. Ramaru helped Sancho and Karashi revive the unconscious Naruto, Neji, and Lee with the curry of life. Ramaru then tried to convince Raiga to stop the meaningless battle, but Raiga only viewed this as betrayal. After seeing that Ramaru had made up his mind and Naruto managed to overpower him, Raiga decided to give himself a funeral by electrocuting himself to death. After the mission was completed, with Ramaru not being an apprentice to Sancho, Naruto and his team returned to the village. Gosunkugi Capture Mission When word that a notorious thief known as Gosunkugi of the Land of Stone was making his way towards the Land of Fire reached Konoha, Tsunade assigned Naruto, Kiba, and Hinata to capture the man. Along their way, they met a bounty hunter by the name of Sazanami who was also after Gosunkugi. After quickly dispatching Naruto and his friends, Sazanami managed to find Gosunkugi but was quickly defeated. He was saved by Konoha Shinobi. It was later when treating the man's wounds that Naruto and his team found the man was actually another wanted man by the name of Tokichi. Tokichi explained that he was framed for murdering a family that Gosunkugi actually killed. Deciding to help Tokichi clear his name, they worked together to track down Gosunkugi again. Gosunkugi and Tokichi himself were captured by another bounty hunter and handed over to the authorities. The bounty hunter was an honorable man and helped clear Tokichi's name. For Naruto and the others, this meant they failed their mission as someone else captured Gosunkugi. Cursed Warrior Extermination Mission. While eating ramen after doing his daily training in preparation for Jiraiya's return, Naruto met a young man named Chishima. He is told about the troubles going on in the land of birds and wishes to help. He then joins Neji and Tenten in solving the mystery of the cursed warrior's ghost. Upon arriving in the land of birds, they meet one of the daimyo's advisors, Moso, who explains the situation. After searching the kingdom at night, Naruto and his team find the ghost and face off against it, only to find that not only was the armor empty, but according to Neji's Byakugan, it had no living presence. Kome believed later that it was one of Moso's devices. The following day, Moso explains that it is believed that the whole situation is a scheme set up by the daimyo's head strategist, Kome, to take over the land of birds. They go to meet the daimyo, Sagi, who turns out to be a young teen and childhood friend of Chishima. However, since becoming daimyo and losing his twin sister Toki, he has become quite cold to all his duties as daimyo. After saving him from an attempted assassination, it's discovered that the weapons are owned by Kome's soldiers. Naruto, Neji, and Tenten begin spying on Kome, who later goes to the site where the cursed warrior was seen the previous night. This time, upon fighting, Naruto and his team face a much more formidable opponent using high-level ninjutsu techniques. While defeating him, the enemy commits suicide by melting himself in acid. Then, later, Kome is arrested for conspiracy. While they're all told the mission is over, both Naruto and Neji have their doubts about it. Naruto goes back to the site to investigate and discovers a chain of underground tunnels. Unfortunately, Naruto takes a path that leads inside the daimyo's palace and is arrested. Later, in a prison cell, Naruto is confronted by a cursed warrior who attempts to kill him. Naruto manages to defeat him and discovers that it's really Sagi in disguise. Sagi explains that he made this disguise to find out who killed his father and sister. Before the fight could continue, an injured Chishima appears and reveals that Moso is behind the deaths of Sagi's family. Naruto then impersonates the cursed warrior and saves Kome from his execution. He then meets up with Neji, Tenten, and the newly arrived Kakashi. They then go to confront Moso. Unfortunately, Sagi goes ahead out of his desire for revenge. Upon catching up with Sagi, it's discovered that Sagi is actually the twin sister Toki impersonating her dead brother. It's also discovered that Moso is actually a ninja named Hoki of the Watari Ninja who planned to take over the land of birds. 
Pokey kidnaps Togi and Naruto and Chishima go after him while Kakashi, Neji, and Tenten deal with the Watari Ninja. Naruto is initially overwhelmed by Hoki's cunning deceptions and various improved jutsu, but is saved by the spirit of Sagi, who tells Naruto he has to save Toki from her anger. After a battle of clones between the two, Naruto defeats Hoki. Later, Naruto and his team watch as Toki takes up her role officially as Daimyo and thanks Naruto for saving her kindness. Buried Gold Excavation Mission Noticing that lately Naruto, Hinata, and Kiba had had a rather low success rate in their ninja mission, Sonata decided to give them one final chance to succeed or be sent back to the academy to restart their training. The mission was to retrieve a hidden treasure. Initially, Naruto and Kiba kept getting into arguments about which way to go, which resulted in them taking different directions each time Kiba emerging in the one correct. Along the way, Hinata injured her ankle, forcing Kiba to go on alone while Naruto stayed with Hinata. After Kiba left, Naruto and Hinata were attacked and captured by mysterious ninja. Naruto later awoke to discover that he and his friends were replicated by the captors. Their captors revealed themselves to be of the Kedoin clan, a clan with a special transformation technique that copies a person beyond just looking at the target. Their plan is to infiltrate Konoha and destroy it from the inside. Their enemies attempt to crush Naruto and his team in a cave-in. Kiba and Naruto manage to free Hinata, who then uses her gentle fist to repel all the rocks. Later, Naruto and his team escape the cave and go after the Kedoin clan. To Naruto's fury, his double goes all around the village, building up a huge bill from various restaurants, and even eats all of Naruto's saved food at home. After finding the doubles, it's discovered that they can't replicate the original's physical prowess and are easily able to capture them. Later, it's revealed from Tsunade that she actually hired the clan to test Naruto and the others on how well they could actually handle such a situation. Star Guard Mission While having a snack with Sakura, Naruto learns that Neji Lee and Tenten were sent on a mission to aid Hoshigakure to protect their precious chakra emitting star, which was actually a meteorite, from Thebes. Suspecting that Orochimaru might be behind these attempted thefts, Naruto convinced Tsunade to add into the team. After Naruto and the team arrived at the base of the Hoshigakure, they met a young Hoshigen named Sumaru, who escorted them safely through the deadly gases surrounding the village. They were then introduced to the acting leader, or Hoshikage, of the village, Akahoshi, who explained the situation. It was revealed that the special star enhances the chakra of whoever trains under it long enough and enables them to manipulate the raw chakra in very unique ways, forming ninjutsu known as the mysterious peacock method. Later, the star was stolen by a masked ninja who possessed the same star enhanced techniques as the Hoshigakure, only more powerful and refined. While Naruto began making friends with several of the Hoshigenin, he learned that Sumaru lost his parents when he was young and dreams of becoming Kage of his village. Later, after Sumaru was kidnapped by Akahoshi, disguised as the masked ninja, it was discovered that the real reason why the star was so coveted by other villages was because of the dangers to using it as very few in history have survived the star training. The force releasing an enhancement of chakra generally proves too unnatural for most people to adapt to, causing the body to give out and die before it can properly synchronize with the chakra. And even if a person does complete the training, there is still a chance the person will eventually be killed by the enhanced chakra. Although the third Hoshikage who died recently stopped the training, Akahoshi resumed it soon afterwards, which the Hoshi ninja had been willing to go through for the village's prosperity. Later, Naruto found himself up against the masked ninja again while Akahoshi attacked with the intent of killing the masked ninja, and knocked Naruto and the masked ninja into the poisonous cavern. Fortunately, the masked ninja saved them both. Naruto then discovered that one of the masked ninja was a Hoshi Jonin named Natsuhi, who was Sumaru's mother and one of the few people to ever successfully complete the star training. She explained that 10 years ago, despite Natsuhi and her husband, who sometime later died, convinced the third Hoshigake to stop the star training in exchange for faking their death and watching over the village from afar. After hearing how dangerous the star really was, Naruto was determined to help Natsuhi stop Akahoshi, who was deliberately using the Hoshigakure for his own selfish goals. Upon facing off with Akahoshi, he revealed to have killed the third Hoshikage so he could take over the village and resume the star training, and willingly sacrifice anyone as long as the village got glory. After Sumaru appeared, Akahoshi used him as a hostage to force Natsuhi to give him the star. Despite Naruto's anger at Akahoshi, Neji reminded Naruto that technically Akahoshi is not a villain to the Hoshigakure, as they all wish to make their village strong as well, and as such, the Konoha ninja cannot do anything against the village leader without repercussions. Later, Natsuhi attempted to retrieve the star once again, despite her failing health, but was killed by Akahoshi. It wasn't until one of the Hoshi Genin showed the villagers the damage the star training did to his body, and the truth of the third Hoshikage's death were revealed when the villagers finally turned against Akahoshi. Determined to regain the controls by any means, Akahoshi embedded the star into his being to gain a tremendous power increase. With the help of a final technique left behind by Natsuhi, Naruto was able to defeat Akahoshi and destroy the star using the Rasengan. Later, the infected Hoshi ninja were taken to Konoha for treatment from Tsunade and are cured. Naruto was glad to see that despite losing the star, Hoshigakure is still determined to become recognized the next great shinobi village. Third Great Beast Arc While going through a standard checkup with Tsunade, Naruto learned that Lee's recovery from his injuries during the Trinity exams was still questionable. Later, Naruto and Tenten went to check on Lee just in time to see him practice a match against a young prodigy named Yagura. To Naruto, Tenten, and Guy's amazement, not only was Yagura able to push Lee back in taijutsu combat, but was also able to use an advanced taijutsu technique to nearly break Lee's ankle. Later, when Naruto and Tenten were worrying about Lee's well-being, Neji convinced him to have faith in Lee as Neji had learned, stating bluntly that Lee has the potential to surpass any prodigy despite his shortcomings because of his dedication. Later, when Guy went on a mission with Yagura, it was discovered that the boy who was with Guy was actually an imposter. Tsunade quickly sent Neji, Tenten, and Naruto to go after Guy. Tsunade decided not to tell Lee in fear that he would follow them despite his ankle injury. Upon catching up with Guy, it was discovered that he was already captured by a ninja team of brothers who wielded a unique puppet technique that controlled wooden training dummies and were on a mission of revenge against Guy for their father's death. While Naruto and the team managed to fight back the dummies, Lee surprisingly showed up and rushed to aid his sensei. As Naruto and the team began to tire, Guy and Lee managed to defeat the brothers' dummy fortress and break the technique. Afterwards, Guy revealed to everyone the story behind his battle with the brothers' father, making the brothers realize their father didn't have contempt for Guy but respect. This meant their desire for revenge was pointless. Yakumo Kurama Rescue Mission While continuing his solo training, Naruto came across a young girl painting a portrait of 
Konoha. While watching her do so, she strangely drew a bolt of lightning striking the village. To Naruto's shock, the village suddenly did get struck by the lightning, causing the Ninja Academy to be engulfed in flames. While following the girl to figure things out, Naruto was stopped by two medical nin and an Anbu who drugged and took her somewhere. Naruto soon returned to the village to learn that recently Kurenai gave up a position as Sensei of Team 8. Not wanting his friends to be sad, Naruto went to find Kurenai and tried to reason with her. After failing to make Kurenai change her mind, Naruto went to talk to Tsunade. Instead of doing so, he bumped into Sakura, who revealed that Kurenai quit because of a new development from an old student of hers named Yakumo Kurama, a student with an unheard of natural aptitude for Genjutsu. Deciding to investigate further, Naruto found Yakumo at her family's mansion and disguised himself as Kurenai to gain access. Inside, he found several pictures of various horrors, including the image of Kurenai being stabbed in the heart. Seeing this picture somehow caused Naruto to become suddenly struck by an overwhelming fear as if he himself was being stabbed in a vision of a demonic looking Yakumo. After being discovered, Naruto was drugged and knocked out. While unconscious, Naruto had a dream about Yakumo and Kurenai, which showed that despite Yakumo badly wanting to be a ninja, Kurenai refused the letter and instead decided to perform a Fuinjutsu to seal away her power. Later, it was discovered that Yakumo came from a noble clan of Konoha that was once infamous for its high aptitude and strong usage of Genjutsu, but lost much of their reputation ever since Yakumo's parents, the head of the Kurama clan, died. It was also revealed that the Kurama clan had a very rare and powerful Kakai Genkai, but without proper guidance was deemed too dangerous. Naruto then joined in a mission to protect Yakumo with my guy, Sakura, and Team 8 as Yakumo was being targeted by members of the Kurama clan, including Yakumo's uncle, Unkai. Naruto and his team managed to find Yakumo, who was protected by Kurenai in time to save them from the Kurama clan. After Sakura treated Kurenai and Yakumo, Yakumo revealed to Naruto that she was put under Kurenai's care back then because of a special order from the third Hokage due to Yakumo's weak body but strong and unstable power. She also revealed that she overheard the third Hokage talking to Kurenai about the Kurama clan's power being a threat to the village that had to be dealt with. To Naruto's even greater shock, Yakumo's parents were killed in a horrible fire that Yakumo suspected was the third Hokage's doing. Then, upon returning to the village, the team found it in ruins with no signs of life. While searching for others, Naruto was found by Unkai. He explained to Naruto that the destroyed village was actually a giant genjutsu cast by Yakumo. Unkai also explained that he and the Kurama clan were after Yakumo because they feared her powers were becoming too unstable and dangerous for the village's safety. He explained that Yakumo's Kekai Genkai allowed her to cast Genjutsu that stimulate the mind so much that it can cause actual damage even in the point of death. The problem is, without proper care and training, the Kekai Genkai's power can turn against the user by creating a second, highly dangerous personality known as Ido. Because of this, the third Okage and Kurenai realized that there was no choice but to destroy Yakumo's power before the second mind took over. Willing to sacrifice himself, Unkai knocked Naruto out to block a census, making the Genjutsu powerless and helping Naruto to escape. Doing so unfortunately left Unkai terribly wounded. Naruto and Team 8 quickly went after Kurenai and Yakumo, only to be caught in another of the Genjutsu. Despite Kurenai's pleas for Naruto not to, Naruto began telling Yakumo the truth about her powers. Doing so caused her to finally remember how her parents died, which caused her inner demon to finally break free. While Naruto had a heated struggle against it, Kurenai pleaded with Yakumo to help as she was the only one who could stop it. While scared and unsure of herself, Yakumo was convinced by Kurenai that this was still her power and could learn to make this power a great tool if she overcame the darkness. Yakumo managed to destroy the monster and save Naruto, finally purging herself of the darkness. Afterwards, it was learned that all this time Yakumo still cared for Kurenai as a mother figure. With Kurenai's final mission for the Hirokake finally completed, Kurenai felt she could now resume her role as leader of Team 8. While Naruto was happy for his friends, the adventure reminded him that he still had to worry about his inner demon and save Sasuke from his darkness. Menma Memory Search Mission While searching for a special bamboo ingredient for his next ramen meal, Naruto came across a young man floating in the river. Quickly, he took him to the village hospital. It was then he discovered that the young man had no memory of who he was. There were no clues to who he was beyond an ocarina the boy was carrying. Later the following night, lightning struck the hospital, causing it to burst into flames. The young man, who was still being cared for in the hospital, quickly acted by saving an infant with the aid of a strange technique performed with his ocarina. To thank him, Tsunade decided to let the boy stay in the village for the time being, as long as he stayed with Naruto. Naruto then decided to name him Menma, a name he came up with from the bamboo he found. As time went on, Menma showed himself to be very considerate and giving as he began doing all kinds of chores around the village without even being asked. While cleaning up the Hokage monument, an unknown man attacked Naruto. At first, Naruto was forced on the defense, until Menma played another melody on his ocarina, which somehow gave Naruto a tremendous surge of chakra to overwhelm the man. This forced the man to retreat, and Naruto to wonder who Menma really was. After telling Tsunade about the incident, Tsunade theorized Menma might be from the land of rice fields that was known for music-based techniques. After begging her, Naruto and Menma were allowed to go, along with Neji and Tenten. They were sent along as Tsunade feared Menma might be affiliated with Orochimaru as one of his subordinates. Toyuya used a similar technique style. On their journey, they came across a small village in ruins. The sight of the destruction seemed to horrify Menma for some reason. Soon after, Naruto and the others were attacked by the villagers. Despite their unexplained hostility, the villagers stopped attacking after learning they were from Konoha. Before the team left the village, one of the villagers approached them and begged for their help. She explained that because of the gold mine at the foot of the village, it had been subjected to a terrible attack by rogue ninja from Otogakure, costing the village countless lives. Thanks to Menma's insisting, it was decided to stay and help the village. Naruto and Menma then began making a wall in aid to protect the village from the next attack. Eventually, the rest of the village was inspired to help them make the wall. While still working on the wall, the man who attacked Naruto and Menma earlier attacked again. In the scuffle, Menma was soon injured while saving the village leader. While treating his wound, it was shockingly discovered a tattoo on Menma that revealed he was actually a member of 
the missing nin. Despite the village's anger towards him, they were talked into helping Menma. Soon after, the rogue ninja attacked again, led by the men from earlier. After managing to fight back their enemies, Menma, who seemed to have regained his memories, revealed that he knew the gang leader Sheen's backup plan to blow up a large dam to flood the entire village. Menma asked Naruto to bring him to the mines, where he planted several explosive tags there to counter Sheen's plan. Along the way, Menma revealed he was indeed a member of that gang. He explained that he was taken in by them when he was young and never realized how evil they were until they attacked the village. Menma explained that shortly after being taken to Konoha, he pretended to have an amnesia to live a peaceful life even for a short while, and to get help from Konoha in stopping his clan's horrible actions against a small village. Sunagaka got a support mission. Kakashi is shown investigating the Takumi village. His ninja dogs found that the village was deserted, and that the body of their founder was taken from its grave. Meanwhile, Sakura, Shikamaru, and Naruto discussed the status report from Tamari, saying that she and her brothers are going to be involved with the village's new shinobi training program. In Sunagakure, the three siblings were shown leading a combat training class. One of the students, a shy, quiet girl named Matsuri, was reluctant to use something that could hurt someone else, so Gara taught her how to use a defensive weapon, the Johyo. They became friends. After word reached Konoha that Gara and his team needed help against a group of ninja called the Four Celestial Symbols men from the Takumi village who kidnapped Matsuri, Naruto joined the rest of the Konoha 11, minus 1010, under Shikamaru's command to help. Naruto was particularly glad he could finally pay back Gara for helping them during Sasuke's defection. Quickly, Shikamaru formulated a strategy to best handle the situation and had Naruto pair up with Lee for main offensive assistance. The two arrived in time to save Gara from Suiko, an opponent with chakra absorbing armor, after being struck with a water release water dragon bullet technique. After Gara recovered with help from Sakura's medical ninjutsu, he took over for Naruto and Lee to finish off Suiko. Afterwards, Gara went on ahead. He stopped just before going into the canyon and was shown to be worried about Matsuri. Naruto followed soon after. Naruto arrived in time to see Gara facing off against the leader of the four celestial symbols men, Hoki, now armed with all the unique weapons of his allies. Unfortunately, Gara was still too exhausted to properly fight back. Naruto quickly went to help Gara. After Hoki shouted his anger towards the five great shinobi countries for overlooking his village's greatness as weapons makers and vowing to destroy them, he dropped Gara in a giant iron sphere which began absorbing the chakra of Shukaku, the one-tailed demon inside Gara. Doing so slowly began to make Gara transform into Shukaku. Hoki then used that chakra and himself as a sacrifice to perform a resurrection technique with the intent of reviving the Takumi village founder, Seimei. Quickly after recovering, Seimei reconfigured the weapons of Hoki as armor for himself. Seimei then began siphoning off Shukaku's chakra, making Naruto repeatedly try to break Gara free. Eventually, Gara's transformation process proved too great for the prison to handle. While Seimei was looking forward to facing Shukaku, Gara was able to suppress Shukaku and revert to normal, amazing Naruto and everyone who appeared. While everyone didn't understand why Gara couldn't take advantage of Shukaku's power, Konkuro explained that Gara was determined to rely on his own power from now. Gara then used his remaining chakra to turn some of the canyon around him into sand and crush Seimei, finally ending the battle and saving Matsuri. As everyone rushed to help Gara, who fainted shortly afterwards, Konkuro noted to Naruto how he'd finally found somebody he could relate to. Later, while Naruto was recovering in the village, Jiraiya showed up. After explaining how he had spent the past few months gathering information about the Akatsuki, he told Naruto he was finally ready to train him for the next two years. Gara, Tamari, Kankuro, and Matsuri left for Tsunagakure. After recovering and having one last bowl of ramen with Iruka, Naruto finally set off with Jiraiya to begin his training, vowing to become strong enough to free Sasuke from Orochimaru when he returned. And there we have it, we have just speed ran Naruto. We got all the major plot points from Naruto's discovery that he was a demon indeed, to fighting with the Sanin out in the middle of a field, to all sorts of wonderful filler. Did you enjoy our video? Be sure to check out these other great videos from the Amagi, and make sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. Meanwhile, a young boy was watching the discussion. He used the opportunity to attempt an <laughs> Atala Naruto prepared a kunai, but turn it off. Oh my goodness gracious. <laughs> he does, however, notice that Sakura too has managed to shake the genju. The genju. <laughs>